Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from wherever it is that you are watching us from. Right here in the city of Nairobi, it's a beautiful Saturday afternoon. Welcome to the Daughters of Zion March edition. You are a protocol breaker. You are more than a conqueror. And you are the apple of God's eye. My name is Bansi Kamugwe. And I am Isabella Minor. You are a wonder woman. You are a woman of valor. You are precious gold. You are more than rubies. You are indeed a woman without limit. In 1 Corinthians 9, 24, the word of the Lord says that you ought to remember that everyone runs the race, but only one gets to get the prize. So you must run the race in such a way that you will obtain the prize. And we win by running our lives through him and while at it that is where we get our strength what a reason to run and in this season of fruitfulness as declared by our prophet at the beginning of the year we know that as daughters of zion we must bear fruit so i want to pose a question to you in the plans that you had at the beginning of the year how far are you how far are you with that vision that you began have you submitted that proposal have you sent in those applications? Have you started that business? Are you putting in the work? I want you to know that in this year, the results will speak for themselves. It's always a total delight to have you join us each and every month. And today the Lord is about to blow your mind. The word is coming to you powerfully. The spirit is going to minister to you right where you are. Remember that there is no distance in the spirit. That which you're believing God for, you're going to get it here and now. Today is your day. Please do remember to share this live stream with your friends, with your families, with your neighbors. Tell everybody and let's get blessed together in this season that the woman must arise. Happy Easter weekend. So where are you going to be spending it? With your loved ones, with your families? It's always a joy to have a moment with our families and also to reflect on the sacrifice that, that Christ made for us. Bella, I don't know about you, but for me, the story of Easter is a story of love. It's a story of mercy. I can't help but just meditate and joy and stay in there just to think of what Christ had to give up for our sake thinking of every stroke that he got yeah. that we may receive healing thinking of the blood that he had to shed that we may get life we need to understand that easter is indeed about love the love of the father shown to us through the son dying on the cross he gave his one and only begotten son who died on the cross can you give out one of your child to die for us on the cross can you? No. But Christ did. did. But Christ did. The Father gave his only begotten son for us. And as we celebrate this Easter season, I know it's going to be a long holiday. As we celebrate this Easter season, just remember, it's all about love and the love of Christ. And may we know the power of the one who died for us. The power of Jesus and I want you to know because Jesus conquered the grave, today you conquer every obstacle. You conquer your history. You conquer every ceiling that has been placed upon you, saying that you can never make it, that you can never go to the next level. Today, as the word of the Lord comes, key in, key in, 
and receive him. You best believe because of that sacrifice, you will see victory in 2024. So as you enjoy your Easter holidays, we'd like to remind you, binge watch episodes for Woman Without Limits show. And by the way, have you watched the latest for San Misula, the couple and Yinka? It's amazing. It's beautiful. Everybody must watch it. You must. You must. Yes. So subscribe to the channel and comment and like it and share on the YouTube channel of Reverend Kathy Kiona. Dangerous. Oh, when I see you. Yeah. We cannot kiss. That place I will cannot... hug you. Yeah. <laughs> I will hug the Lord. I will hug Jesus in you. Mama, I came from Abuja as a fresh boy. Hi. <laughs> so, she told me she had rehearsal. I, that's oh my where, God. Where was of the Mama, I went there as a freshman. Oh I, was, I was so fine. This yeah. is too much. I was, I, I, uh, my court Somebody was sharp. help me. <laughs> Mama, I came down from the car eh. to see the love of Mama, my life. Why are you making this sound even worse? Oh yes. my God. Yes. Mama, the love of my life saw yes. me like this. I was like, oh, eh. welcome. Thank you, sir. She said that. The Mom, love of your life. Mama, I was like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> My return flight, I'm moving it back. <laughs> this special match edition was shot on location at Shabak Gardens Luxury Apartments and Airbnb, located along Campbell Road. It's just 15 minutes from CBD. And during this Easter, you're all welcome in any other holidays or if you want to make it to a chill spot, be it couples, be it families, or even singles, carry Boni Sana. For bookings or more information, visit our website. If you'd like to sponsor any of our DOZ editions starting April, get in touch with us. We now hand you over to the main service. God bless you. The word of God for business from barrenness. Therefore, our businesses shall not be barren. Therefore, our marriages shall not be barren. Therefore, our children shall not be barren. I decree and declare it is my season to show forth fruit. I'm in that season. 
Shikatai, the days of shame and reproach have been wiped away. The days of your shame and reproach have been swept away. Haya namahaya. Ho sikata raba sikataya. He kete raba sikede. He sekete raba sande bahaya. Rike sekete raba sikataya. He kede raba sikata kariya zataya. He nama sekete raba saya. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to turn to two or three people. And I want you to introduce yourself by a new name. And I want you to tell them, I am a fruitful vine. I am a fruitful vine. Start by testifying and telling them, I am a fruitful vine. Barrenness is not anywhere near me. I am a fruitful vine. That is your new name. That is your new identity. I am a fruitful vine. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, do you believe that you're a fruitful vine? Do you believe that you're a fruitful vine? Lift up your voices. Lift up your hands above your head and appreciate the King of glory. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus and shout. Shout, daughter of Zion. Shout, 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 shout. Hallelujah. We give him all the glory and all the praise. Look at your neighbor, high five them, and tell them there is no one like our God. No one like our God. He's so good. Do you know the reason for this season is Jesus? And that's the reason why we can come to our God in confidence and call him Abba Father. Do you know before that we could not do that? But now because of Jesus dying on the cross, do you know what a privilege it is? That he took your sins. That he took your curse. So that you'll be free and free indeed. Do you know how that, do you know how that feels? You know, see, I'm not a pastor, so I, 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 I don't have a Greek word to express it. But I'm just saying, it is such an honor. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yani, while we were not even thinking of him, he thought about us. Ah, with this revelation, I want you to shout. I want you to lift up your, your banner. I want you to just celebrate him. Give him glory. Give him glory, somebody. And shout. Shout to the Lord, all you people. Shout with the voice of triumph. For Jesus is the King. Jesus is the Lord. Shout, all ye people. Shout, all ye people. Rejoice. Rejoice. For we are free. He who the sun sets free is free indeed. Share. your neighbor tell them when you're praising God it's good to smile it's good to smile all right let me see you dance hey.
Do you have a neighbor? Okay. What's your name? Do you have a neighbor? Are you ready? Hey, hey, hey. I'm gonna dance and praise it. I'm gonna dance and praise it. I'm gonna dance and praise it. Come and tell them. I'm gonna dance and praise it.
blind eyes are open, strongholds are broken. I am living by faith. Nothing is impossible. Come on, come on, come on. Nothing is impossible. Through hey. you, we say, through you. tell them we have been given a name that at the mention of this name every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. Do you still have something in your hand? Do you still have something in your hand? Do you see I want you to get crazy for Jesus? Let me see you wave it, 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 wave it.
because as every knee bow, every knee bows, oh God, as every mouth open or is open to confess, Almighty oh Father, we declare that you are Lord. We declare that you are our God. We declare that you are our God. And today we are celebrating, oh God, your resurrection, knowing, oh God, that you have changed us, you have saved us, you have restored us, you have kept us, oh God. You have been by our side, Almighty Father. On earth, in heaven, there is no other God like you. Oh God, there is none that can compare to you. And there is the evidence that you alone are God because there is an empty grave. Because you have risen as king you have risen as lord you have risen as our intercessor god and today we confess oh god and say that you are god as daughters of zion oh god we are not ignorant of the price that you paid for us we worship and we honor you king of glory you deserve all the glory. You deserve all our worship. You deserve all the honor. We give you glory and we give you honor. And daughter of Zion, I want you to lift up your voice. I want you to lift up your hands above your head. And let us appreciate the King of glory. Let us appreciate the King of glory. It is by his blood that we are able to access him. It is by his blood that we are able to call him Lord. It is by his blood that we have going to access. And guess what? Your father does not call you a stranger, but he calls you his own child. He has given us life. Let us appreciate the king of glory. And today, our God is not like any other God. Guess what? The tomb is empty. Guess what? The tomb is empty. And guess where he is? He is seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you and I, saying, I understand their struggles, saying, I understand their pain, and because he is risen, we have risen with Christ. I want you to appreciate the Lord. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Because he died, guess what? He says that you are his righteousness. We no longer have to struggle to be good. Why? Because we have the righteousness of him that paid the price for you. Amen. So turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you are the righteousness of God. In Jesus' mighty name, are you glad to be in the house of God? On this Easter, are you glad to be in the house of God? Guess what? God is about to speak to us. God is about to do great things in our midst in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And before we have our seats, let's appreciate our mom, the prophet of God, the visionary of daughters of Zion, a woman that we love so much, a woman that believes in you and I, a woman that has paid such a price to just be where we are. Mom, we love you, we appreciate you, we honor God for you in Jesus' mighty name. And as you descend on the comfort of your seats, let's appreciate the neighbor on the right and on the left in Jesus' mighty name. And tell your neighbor, it's time to give. It's time to give. Worship is never complete until you part with something and you offer God your offering in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And I shall be speaking on giving as an act of faith. Amen. Giving as an act of faith. Let's go to the Bible in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 35, the first part. Hebrews 11, 35, just the first part. The Bible says that women received back their dead raised to life again women received back their dead raised to life again in this season it has been declared that we are in a season of fruitfulness amen for those of you that have been coming to jubilee christian church we know that we are in a season of fruitfulness and in this season we must understand that it is not a time for losses it is a time of increase amen this is not the time where we lose our marriages or we lose our children or we lose our businesses. But it is a time to experience fruit in every area of your life. And in a time of fruitfulness, it is a time of increase. It is a time of multiplication. It is a time of expansion in the mighty name of Jesus. And so uh, when we look in the Bible, a woman plays a very important role in life. Amen. We know that when God created a woman, he said that she, he created a help, a helpmate for Adam. But a woman 
woman plays a very important role, role in, the, in, in life. And also you as a woman, guess what? You play an important role. Amen. You were not an accident. Amen. Whether you were planned for or you were not planned for, you were not an accident. A woman is one that sustains life. That is why a woman receives a seed from a man, carries it for nine months, protecting that seed, nurturing that seed. And after nine months, she's able to bring forth a child. So a woman is able to incubate and create an environment for life or for an environment for life to thrive. And so when we look in the Bible, there are many women that we have seen in the Bible that played significant roles. Women that played both positive and negative and but whatever they did these women were fruitful in their ways we see the uh, we see rebecca who was able to position jacob to become to receive his blessing from his father we see deborah who arose and became a judge and a voice of god in israel we see jael who killed the king uh, king sisera who was an enemy of the children of god at that particular time and we also see delilah who brought down a great man amen and so as a woman, you need to understand that you carry power. As a woman, you carry the grace to multiply and you have the grace to become everything that God has called you to manifest in your time and in your generation. And so in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, this is referred to as the hallmark of faith. Everyone that is featured in this chapter is, uh, is, is spoken of as a person that walked in faith. And so in this chapter, we see some special women that are featured and the Bible says that they are the women that receive their dead back to life. These women were called considered as women of faith. So we need to ask ourselves then who were these women? But when you look in the Old Testament, there are only two women that received their children back to life out of faith. And that was the woman, the Shunammite woman and the widow of Zarephath. And we need to understand that in the Old Testament, performing miracles wasn't just like in the New Testament. The reason is in the Old Testament, there was no point of reference. You know, in the New Testament, Jesus has already said that you shall lay hands on the sick, you shall raise the dead, you shall cast out demons. But in the Old Testament, there was no point of reference. In the Old Testament, there was no promise that you shall raise the dead. But yet, why were these women, women so much in faith that they believed that yet their children had died, but they were able to come back to life? And so when we look at the widow of Zarephath, she's the one that God anointed and ordained to sustain Elijah. And in the, first, in the book of First Kings chapter 17 and verse 9, the Bible says, Arise and go to Zarephath, uh, which belongs to Sidon and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. And so this woman, first number one, you need to understand she wasn't a, an Israelite. She wasn't a Jew. So she was not a woman of covenant. But God says that he, has, he had commanded a woman to sustain, uh, to sustain Elijah in that time of the of the famine and so this woman just acted out of faith i don't know what she felt or why she believed this man but she just acted out of faith and after she she gave the man of god from that he time henceforth she never experienced the famine as other people are experiencing famine and so in her time of need what was her time of need when her child died in her time of need because she had sustained a man of god god had no choice but to bring back to life what was dead in her life and then there was the woman of Sh the, the Shunammite woman in 2 Kings chapter 9, chapter 4, verse 9, the Bible says, And she said unto her husband, Behold, now I perceive that the, this is a holy man of God and pa that, that passeth by us continually. This was a woman that was sensitive. Ask your neighbor, are you sensitive to the things of God? Because the Bible says that she perceived. Nobody, nobody told her. But she could tell there's something unique about this man. And so she decided to create a place for Elisha to be able to stay so that he can be able to do his ministry. And guess what? Even for her, because of her act of giving, the need that was in her life, because she was experiencing barrenness, because, because of that act of giving, God was able to meet her and turn her barrenness into fruitfulness. And the time her child died, guess what? She went back to the prophet. Why? Because she had sustained a movement. A, 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 she had sustained a system. And we need to understand that as children of God, we've got to grow and to mature uh, in our area of giving. Where we understand we don't give to a man. We don't give to a man. We give to a system. And the system that you give to is the system that you want to sustain into life. Amen. The reason you feed every day is because you don't want to die. Amen. The reason you feed your children is because you don't want them to die. So you only give to a system that you want to sustain to live. Amen. And so this woman was not just, these two women were not just sustaining a man. They were sustaining a movement. 
They were sustaining a system. And the Bible says in Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13, that, in, that by a prophet, Israel, sorry, by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, Israel was preserved. So if these women did not play their part, guess what? It wasn't just doomed for the prophet, but it was doomed for Israel. Why? Because it is through these prophets that God was able to sustain Israel. So their giving went beyond giving a man. So when we come to giving the house of God, we are not giving a man. We are giving a system. And because it is a system that has life, when we experience death in our own lives, guess what will feed to us? It is the system that we have been feeding. Can I hear an amen? So your giving should go beyond just, just that change. That, just that, you know, just that money that you're giving to sustain the church. No, you're giving to a system that has the ability to speak into your life. And so from these two women, we get to understand that there are women that walked in discernment. Tell your neighbor, you shall walk in discernment. There are women that went, that were willing to give beyond their present circumstance. They were women of faith. And guess what? They are women that sustained a move. Amen. A movement. Amen. They are women that sustained a system. And guess what? Today you and I are not giving to a man, but we are giving to a system that feeds us. Amen. That system that sustains us. Amen. When you give to the house of God, guess what? God will give it back to you. Amen. And in your season of dryness, in your season of experiencing drought, in your season of experiencing barrenness, what will speak for you? It is your giving. Because these two women were able to receive their dead back to life because they sustained the men of God. Can I hear an amen? Are we ready to give? Are we ready to give? Amen and amen. I want us to give, it, uh, to, to give with a new revelation today. Amen. So that when you stand and we claim this verse, women received their dead back to life. We need to ask ourselves, did we do what they did? Did we do what they did? Because there's something they did for God to have responded in that particular way. Amen. We send to you the ashes in the spirit of excellence in Jesus' mighty name. If you're a tither, you may stand up on your feet. Amen. If you're giving your tithe, if you're giving your offering, if you're giving it through... The, uh, 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 with your envelope or you're giving via your phone, please let's raise it up in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we give you glory, we give you honor. As we give today, we are giving understanding that what we are feeding is what will feed us back, my Father. We are giving because we believe, Almighty Father, that you are the life giver. And my Father, as we saw everything in our life that is experiencing any form of death, any form of barrenness, my God, it's revived in the name that is above every other name. We give you glory, we give you honor in Jesus' mighty name. And we said, amen. We send the ashes to you in the spirit of excellence as I give the following announcements and even as I share, I would like to invite Stella to come and share with us a powerful testimony. Amen. Amen and amen. We have good news. The JCC Mtaani that was running from Thursday, all the, from Wednesday to today, they have been able to win 422 souls. <laughs> amen and amen. That, is, that was awesome. That was awesome. Amen. So if you'd want to also be part of the JCC Mtani, please visit our information desk after this and God is going to bless you. We have a powerful school of catering, a very good school of catering. So if you'd like to register to join the class, please visit our information desk after this. And our next Daughters of Zion meeting is going to be on the 27th of April from 2 p.m. So please invite your sister girl, invite your mom, invite... That person that you've been believing God for them to get saved, just bring them into the house of God. If you're planning to get married between June and November, we have a premarital class that is, uh, that is, uh, that is starting soon. Please uh, register at the information desk or you can book an appointment to come and see Pastor Moniki during the week. And this is also open for those that do not fellowship at JCC. Amen. We have powerful books. Our mom's book, Intimacy with God. It's right there and more of mom's books. Please visit our Get Understanding Bookshop and you're going to be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. If you have a testimony, share with us at praise report, uh, praise report at jccKenya.org in Jesus' mighty name. Let's appreciate Stella. Oh, let's appreciate Stella. She has a powerful, powerful testimony. Amen and amen. And she's looking hot. 
Amen, amen. Stella, tell us what God has done in your life. Good afternoon, church. Praise God. Amen. Hey, you look beautiful up here. Oh, mom, I love you so much. I honor the grace of our bishop and mom. We love you so much. And I'm here to share my testimony. And uh, I have two faces of the testimony, the same. Uh, face one. I was involved in an accident uh, back in October, yeah, and uh, it was in the evening as I was going home. So I boarded a matatu, it was raining, and uh, everybody got into the matatu and I was left there. And then the conductor said, <laughs> and then Kasema, no, ni godze, but I was the last one. So I, I was nearly beboka macrom. So I was the fourth person at the back seat. And because I'm tall, I requested the conductor, please don't put somebody in between my legs. Let me just stretch. And he allowed it. So um uh um he started the car, uh, the, the, the matatu, and we moved. After like 20 minutes, every time I get to a matatu, because of my calling of winning souls, I usually interact with the neighbors. So I interacted with the woman at the corner, and I started telling her, it can kuongea. The woman was very negative. So my matatu in the pole pole and na na kuku na prekia wa toto. And then I was like, okay, let's do this. Uh, just relax to Tafika too. But after like two minutes, she complained again. Come be a madam. Unazua e life be like God. Manze wezi survive. Just kusema tu hivo. There was a bang from behind. And I'm telling you, we got hit by a lorry that was so heavy. So, because ilikuwa kwa srop tuligongwa, mi nikiwa backseat nilipushiwa until apambele. So, everybody, including the woman I was talking to, the backseat, she was the first one to die. She was crushed her head, and the blood was brushed the whole vehicle. So, me, when I was just around the conductor, I was the first one to leave a mat. So me, si kwa na damu, but everybody in that vehicle, alikuwa mejan damu. So I was shocked, but I God God preserved my life, and uh, that is phase one. Okay, that is phase one. Um, I went to the hospital after a few days. I was discharged, but because of the trauma, I could not sleep. I tried buying black curtain. I could not sleep. I called Pastor Carol and my department pastor, Pastor Zippy. I asked them, what do I do? Pastor Carol told me, do this, Stella, because traumas, they grow. When, when you delay, go for counseling. I went, and the counselor tried to give me all the manner of, uh, of, 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 of uh, advice, what you're go, going to do, and this, and this, and this, and this. But one night, as I was, I was sitting uh, in my bedroom, I was worried, full of fear. I could see like my bed is usually at the road. So anytime I was, I was touching the wall to see, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. But one night I got a vision. I saw Bishop. Bishop came to me in a vision. And Bishop told me uh, an instruction. He gave me an instruction. And he told me, Stella, I want you to worship in this season of pain. Don't complain, don't mama. I want you to worship. And I began to worship. I worshiped. I could become weary, but Bishop could tap me. Stella, I told you to worship. I worshiped, I worshiped. And from that day, I slept like a baby. I never went back to that counselor. I never went back. That is phase one. The traumas were gone. I decided, now that Bishop said that I should worship, uh, what will I do? Will I join the worship with my crutches? <laughs> I'm not working. I'm going for therapies. The doctors are, are giving me negative report because of your weight. Your hip will not, will not uh, 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 recover because after the accident, I got dislocation along my disc at the back and then the hip joint. So they told me, the, the doctor was dis were discussing, you know what, it will take time for you to recover because of your weight. So I went therapy after therapy after therapy. Everybody, pastors are praying for me, no healing. When I go back, they are telling me, it will take time. But I remembered the word of my dad. Dad said, I worship. 
So I decided, I had, Pastor Benihin is coming. So I decided, oh, so there will be worship. Let me, let me, let me know how they, they are doing it. And I, I realized there were practices going on. Back in November, before even I recover, I came for DOZ, <laughs> me, myself. I came, mom prayed for me. And then I went back. I went and joined the group that were doing worship for Pastor Benihin's coming. So we used to go for, for overnight practices uh, in CFF, then to Nenda Rai, Zote, Siku Miss. The, the people who are going for practices can witness. I was there every day. I said, I will obey the instruction of my dad. Dad said, I worship. So I worshipped and we practiced until the D-Day. When I was so devastated, I was asking myself, now because 24th is DOZ, Sasa will mama allow us to go to, to, to Nyayo, Nyayo Stadium? And then all of a sudden, I came on Sunday and mom said, everybody, we are going to Nyayo Stadium. I said, hey, thank you. So I went to Nyayo Stadium very early on Friday for the last practice. And mom came, and Sinach came, and Wangojiri came. All of them, they said. And then in the evening, uh, Wangojiri said, uh, can you host someone? And then I said, me, myself, in the days of scarcity, I'll host someone. Because I know there are waiting re angels that come with visitors. So I, one, one woman came and tapped me and said, I want you to host me. So you said you are from JCC Parklands. Just host me. Little did I know. That old woman, she's not my age. She's a older than my mother. So she came. She's from JCC Nakuru. Richard, did I know I have hosted an intercessor. She came to my house. Hey, she prayed the whole night. I declare, turn around. Hey, we agreed. We agreed. We prayed. We prayed. I thank God for Mom Jane in Nakuru. May God bless you, Mom. And she told me, Stella, this is your new beginning. That Saturday morning. And I believed we went to your stadium. Wacha ni kuambie kukanyesha. Na hiyo time, the doctor have told me, make sure, usinyeshoe because I had numbness. Nkua na ganda, na shidua kutembea mgui, na shidua kuinuka. Ah, shetani ya niletea discouragement. These are already in uh, business forums. Sijui ya naitu anani. Haka kuja, kanishika, kaniendea bag. Haka niambia, encourage yourself. And I said, Hey, all this journey, I cannot be discouraged. I encourage myself in the word of God. And then I seated where the sick were. I started praying for myself. I put a faith demand. I said, if my mom postponed this OZ for me, I am taking this day for myself. And I'm telling you, when Pastor Benihin was praying, he said, the Lord is rotating your right hip. You will feel like electric heat. I felt the same. I'm telling you, I threw the crutch away. I felt like I am another, hey, praise God together with me. I am on hills. I could not walk for five months. Look at what the Lord has. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This altar has spoken for me. Thank you, mom, for obeying God. Thank you for postponing Dios for us to go. For me, I'm healed. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm not even ripping. Yeah. Wow. And she's wearing high heels. Yeah. Amen. If you had seen her for sure for five months, she used to have mukwaju. She came, that Sunday me, I saw her in front here. You know, I saw her on the pulpit. I was like, is that Stella? Then on Sunday to ashamed the devil. She brought her seat in front there with heels. Eh? Amen. It shall be the same for you in Jesus' mighty name. There is nothing that is impossible. God is going to reverse doctor's report. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The same way she got an instruction to an instruction to worship in her time of pain. Just turn your murmuring into worship. Amen. God will open barren wombs. God will raise the dead. God will heal the sick because it is our season. It is our hour in Jesus' mighty name. Put your hands together as we welcome our mom. Hey, my God. May your testimony come also in Jesus' name. I say, may your testimony come also in Jesus' mighty name. You who has decided 
that today over Easter, you're going to be at the Daughters of Zion. I don't even think you understand. You don't understand that over Easter, over this season, that Jesus 2,000 years ago paid the price for you and died. And it falls on the Daughters of Zion day. And you are here. Jehovah is God. I declare in the name of Jesus, before you pray, your answers will rush. I declare in the name of Jesus, whatever you have prayed over the years that has not happened yet, I declare speed over your life. I rise up as a servant of the Most High God to declare you cannot be delayed another day. I rise up to declare as Stella has testified, your testimony is coming this year. Your testimony is coming now. I declare you who have come to celebrate Easter with us over the daughters of Zion Day. I stand as a prophet to declare, I prophesy over your life that what you have waited for is happening speedily in the mighty name of Jesus. I stand to declare that God will use you for your generation, that your voice will be heard, that whatever you're trusting in God to do, he will do it quickly in the name of Jesus Christ, that your testimony is being made now. I declare in the next two months, you will have your car. I declare, I declare in the next two months, somebody here is about to drive what they will not spend one shilling on. I declare in the name of Jesus, many of you will get into your ministry and God will use you dangerously. Before the end of this year, you will see a manifestation of God's power over your life in Jesus' name. I stand to declare, some of you will get married before July. Some of you will get married by the end of this year. Some of you are about to walk down the aisle. I stand to declare your financial status is changing. You will get your financial abundance. I stand as a prophet of God to prophesy. Your abundance is coming now. I stand to declare over Easter. It is your season of elevation. I rise up to declare as a prophet of God that your hour has arrived. You will not be delayed another day. I stand to declare every witchcraft that has been pronounced over your life. I rise up to declare it is nullified today. In the name of Jesus, you will see God. You will hear God. You will testify. It is your hour over this Easter. You will say in the next Easter that last year it happened over your life. In the name of Jesus, even you who is watching us from all over the world, I start to declare your season of elevation is now. You will be fruitful. I said you will be fruitful. I said you will be fruitful. I said you will be fruitful. Everything you touch to do, God will bless your hands. He will bless the work of your hands. I stand to declare favor. Let me stand to declare favor is your portion. I don't know who I came for this afternoon, but I prophesy favor, unmerited favor. The favor that you could never work for. The favor that you could never earn. I declare in the name of Jesus, you will begin to experience favor. Doors are about to open for you that no devil can shut. I declare other nations are opening up for you. I call for Canada, for the daughters of Zion. I call for Australia, for the daughters of Zion. I call for America. For the daughters of Zion, I speak to South Africa. For the daughters of Zion, I speak to United Kingdom. For the daughters of Zion, I speak you are unstoppable. You will get your visas to travel where you want. 
you are unstoppable yeah. this is the year that you will testify yes. that your God has done it for you yeah. I declare whatever you've waited for yeah. it comes rushing towards yeah. you in the mighty name of Jesus yeah. Christ yeah. let me submit to Sarah the people that laughed at you yeah. because you had taken too long yeah. they are about to laugh with you because they will see you are God. He does not delay. He answers at the right time. Some of you that think your God has taken too long. I stand to declare. He's turning everything around. I declare before you celebrate one thing. Another thing will fall upon your laps. Before you celebrate the second thing. The third thing will come rushing. Before you celebrate about the third thing, the fourth thing will come rushing. And you'll be surrounded by testimony after testimony. After testimony after testimony. Some of you are getting healed. As I prophesy, some, someone is getting healed now. I declare in the name of Jesus, affliction shall not rise up a second time. I declare in the name of Jesus, every sick person under the sound of my voice, your healing comes now. Before I preach the word, let your healing come now. Remember you came on Easter. I declare over this Easter, everything is resurrecting. I resurrect everything that has died. Your spiritual walk, I resurrect it today. You shall have a solid walk with God. I resurrect your spiritual walk. You will walk spiritually stout and intact. You will pray powerfully. You will read the word of God powerfully. Your spirituality gets back now. And it aligns in the name of Jesus. I start to declare your financial status resurrect. Today in the name of Jesus. Your finances resurrect. In the name of Jesus. I rise up to declare your relationships resurrect yeah, relationships resurrect relationship resurrect every dead relationship resurrect now in the name of jesus everybody that has been trusting god for a solid relationship i stand as a prophet of god to declare resurrection your relationships will work in the name of jesus I declare this is a weekend of resurrection. Everything is resurrecting. Things that are dead. I declare resurrection. Everything that left you. I declare resurrection. I declare your peace is resurrecting. You are walking in peace. You are walking in power. You are walking in glory. You are walking in amazing speed. In the name of Jesus, I stand to declare a resurrection, a resurrection of everything that died, every joy, the joy that died. I declare in the name of Jesus, the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. I declare from today, depression lives your life. Ah, let me say it again. Depression lives your life. Depression, hear the voice of God. The joy of the Lord yeah. is coming over God's people. Yes. Depression shall not be their portion. Yes. In the name of Jesus, name of you Jesus. shall sleep well. You shall sleep soundly. Yes. Depression shall not overcome you. Sicknesses and diseases, we declare in the name of Jesus. Yes. Today is your dying day. Yes. Every sickness dies. Yes. Every barrenness yes. dies. If you're barren in your womb, if you're barren in your finances, if you're barren in your relationship, if you're barren in your workplace, I declare resurrection right now in the name of Jesus. Thank 
Karaseta, and Karasayaba, or Randa Basakata, and Randa Basale, every daughter of Zion, hear the voice of God. You will testify of the healing power of God. You will testify of the speed of the Almighty. You will testify that God has done it for you. This is your hour. And the Katanamasai, I come against the demonic spirit of fear. I rise against the demonic spirit of trauma. I rise up against it right now. And I declare in the name of Jesus that you will walk in faith. I declare faith. I release faith over your life now. Faith. Faith to believe God again. Faith to trust God again. Faith to receive from God again. Faith to believe again. Faith. I release it over your life. I release faith over your life. I release faith over your life. I release faith over your life. You will believe this God again. You will believe this God again. You will believe this God again. He is able to do it. He is able to turn things around. In the twinkling of an eye. In the flash. In the waking up. He is able to do everything that you never imagined possible. I declare in the name of Jesus that that is your portion. I rise up to declare you will be delayed no more. I rise up to declare you will cry no more. I rise up to declare your tears will be tears of joy. I rise up to declare this year will be the year of celebration because fruitfulness will happen all over your life and you will celebrate the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. This is the hour. I declare it to be so. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Oh, yes. So shall it be. Hakanema seketele kayama. So shall it be. For it cannot be otherwise. I declare any devil that plays around with the daughters of Zion. They forget now in the name of Jesus. Because you will testify. And you will testify now, quickly, speedily. Speedily. Speed will be the name of the game. From this altar. From this altar. Speed will be the name of the game. Speed. Favor will be the name of the game. Everywhere. Every person that came today to celebrate Easter. I declare in the name of Jesus, the same God that brought you today is going to do things in your life that no man could do. You're going to look and say, this is the finger of God. This cannot be my wisdom. My wisdom cannot take me this far, this fast. It has to be the hand of God. In Jesus' mighty name, I want you to shout to the Lord with the mightiest voice. Daughter of Zion, I want you to shout like a warrior. Daughter of Zion, I want you to shout like a warrior. Shout that you're getting paid. Shout to the Lord with the voice of triumph. In the name of Jesus. Praise Lord. Somebody say hallelujah. I want you to leave the comfort of your seat. And I want you to go to 10 sister girls and smile at them and tell them it's done. Our God has done it. Walk around and just tell them you don't care what they are waiting on God for. But whatever it is, 10 sister girls, tell them it's done. Walk around. Love on somebody. Tell them it's done. Tell them Yahweh has done it. Tell them Abba has done it. Tell them El Elyon has done it. Tell them Adonai has done it. Tell them El Shaddai has done it. Walk around, walk around, walk around. 
Walk around, ten of them. Ten of them. Tell them it's done. Walk around, tell them it's done. Tell them it's done. Walk around, walk around, walk around, walk around. Walk around. I say ten of them. Ten of them. Walk around. Walk around. Tell them it's done. Come on, walk around. Walk around. Tell them it's done. It's done, 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 it's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. If you know that for sure it's done, ah, you dance like you know. Run! 
God we serve. How amazing is this God? How powerful is this God? Hey, today the word I have for you. Hey, Jesus. Tell your neighbor, arise, 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 arise. And just before we get onto the word of God, I want us to acknowledge your bishop, my bishop. My, uh. yeah. You better find your way to the house of God tomorrow. I'm just saying. Tomorrow, you better find your way to the house of God. Huh, you will understand this is Resurrection Sunday. I wish, I wish I had a witness in the house. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. hey, Jesus. You better find your way to the house of God tomorrow. Oh, this is resurrection Sunday. Hey, Jesus. My God. <laughs> hey, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up like the eagle. They shall walk and not. Ah, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up like the eagle. They shall come on, my somebody. I want you to look at your neighbor. Tell them those that wait, weeping and us for a night, but joy come in the morning. Ah, if you've waited on the Lord, I'm here to tell you joy. Our spiritual authority visited us and said some dangerous things. I don't know who is here today, but I want to let you know the devil that did not kill you earlier on. The devil that did not take you out before is too late. I came to let you know you're not dying. You shall live and not die to declare the works of God. I said God has raised you for such a time as this. I came to let you know your ministry shall be realized. Globally in the name of Jesus. You shall no longer be a village champion. It shall be a global situation. Globally they will hear your name. If you did not die before, you're not dying now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. It's too late. You already have a vision of where you are going. I declare you are going far. Yes. Ooh. Hey. Ah. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up like the eagles. They shall run. Your tears, your latter glory shall be greater. 
and your former. I declare in the name of Jesus, so shall it be over your and life. Lift up a shield of the Lord. you're not fainting you would have fainted last year but that you may babu this thing is going off but the fact that you you you're here yeah it means that that faint it means that that fainting cannot take you out in the name of jesus oh my god my god my god i said that fainting cannot take you out in jesus name Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God. So I want to thank God and acknowledge my husband, our bishop. What a mighty man of valor. What an amazing man of valor. What a lion. Hai karasa na mazeka. Heka ne masiki telega. Mandele basia. Harakana seke maza. My God. I want to acknowledge my husband. Oh God, Father God, we thank you for all you have done and who you are. What a wonder you are. One day, I'll give you testimony. You will say, Jesus is Lord. Hey, Jesus Christ is Lord. Turn with me to the book of Isaiah. I want to acknowledge our pastors here. Pastor Joanne, I haven't seen you like for how long? This year, have I even seen you? This? Oh yeah, 10th of, no. Have I even seen you this year? That's not correct. It's not correct. And I thank God for all the pastors. I love you guys. Thank you so much. You're, you're amazing. Pastor Caro, Pastor Lydia, Prophetess, Pastor uh, Zippy, all of you guys are amazing. And you helped me do an amazing work. And I love you so much. Many of them have been praying with me seriously. We've been having serious, serious prayer and warfare meetings. And it's been amazing. And I really, really acknowledge all of you. I love you so much, so much more than you probably will ever know. I want to read Isaiah chapter 60. From verse 1 to verse 3. <laughs> yeah. We're going to read that. And then you're going to sit and I'm going to work the word. Say, work it, mama. Work it. I'm ready for you. Are you ready for me? Yeah. Uh -huh. Say, work it, mama. Work it, mama. We are arising. Yeah. I, we are arising. Yeah. Whatever needs to come up is coming up. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody say, amen. amen. So we're going to read it from the ESV version. This is uh, uh, ESV version of uh, Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 to verse 3. The rest of the readings are going to be from New King James, most of them. But just flow with me. If you're ready, I want us to read it together. Two, three, go. Clear your throat. <coughs> Honey, I love you so much. Thank you for raising me, for being an amazing, mighty man of valor. Thank you. Everything I did is because of what you taught me. Every time I stood here to say anything is because of what you taught me. I've learned it all from you. And I acknowledge you. I love you so much. You're, you're just amazing. Amen. Two, three, go. Arise. Shine. Hold on. There is a comma. So meaning it's on its own. So you're told two things. Arise. Shine. Uh-huh. For your light has come. Again it stops. And then it says what? And the glory of God, of the Lord, has risen upon you. Read. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the people. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. Uh -huh. And nations shall come to your light. And king to the brightness of your rising. God, use me today. Let somebody hear your majestic voice. Do what no man can do. Help us to understand your word. Speak to us. We are listening. Jesus, let your anointing flow. That anointing that makes ministry easy. I pray that Father God, Holy Ghost, use me for yourself. I'm a conduit. A pipeline, just a channel. So use me, God. Everything in me is surrendered to you. Jesus, I decree that you may increase. Be seen and be heard. In Jesus' mighty name. And somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say a better amen. amen. 
Would you look at three people around you, tell them, arise, 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 arise. And then you can go ahead and take your seats. And let me work the word. Worship team, you're amazing. And you look beautiful, all of you. I love your African attires. You look beautiful. And the Lord is going to bless us. Somebody say, arise. arise. Now, when you read arise, the word of God is not suggesting to us. This is not a suggestion. Neither is it an advice. You realize that this is not even just a dream or an opinion. This word arise is a command. It is a command for us to arise. When a command comes from God, it means that it is doable and it is achievable. So God will not command you to do something that he has not enabled you to do. And so for him to say arise, it means that he has given you the capability to arise in Jesus name. And somebody said a better amen. amen. So why is he telling you, uh, why, why is it easy for you to do it? Because you have his backup. He is the one who says to arise. So he gives you backup in order to be able to arise. When you read the Bible, according to Psalm 119 and verse 89, the Bible says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. And so when God commands something, it's already settled in heaven. And so because it's settled, you have the ability to achieve whatever it is God says. So God has spoken his word that we should arise and shine. And you need a positive change from your present status. Right now where you are is not where you want to be. Everybody under the sound of my voice, including me, we all want to arise and become everything that we were created to arise. There's something that we desire to do in order to become who God created us to become. Now I want you to know that the devil can never change or alter God's plan concerning your life. If, the key word is if, you cooperate with God. The issue is when you don't cooperate with God, but then you are expecting for you to manifest the way God wants you to. As a daughter of Zion, you must cooperate with God in order for this kingdom matter to begin to happen over your life. So somebody say, arise. I want you to preach with me today. I want you to say, arise. Aha. Uh -huh. So arise. I'm going to give you a few things about arising so that I can again tell you how it is that we are going to arise. By the end of this service today, you will not be where you are. Yeah. I said you will not be where you are. Yeah. And by the end of the meeting today, you will testify of how you arose and what God did. And I started this message last week and I talked about uh, um, a wonderful woman, Deborah. So I want you to look at or watch it rather on YouTube. Those of you who are watching us from everywhere, Christine Dere told me she's waiting. She's on the screen. She's just waiting from the UK and so many of you from the UK and from the US and from Australia, from Canada, from uh, everywhere, all over the world. I love you, South Africa. God bless you so much. I believe this is our season to arise. I want to see daughters of Zion all over the world. I want to see them all over the world. I want to meet you in Australia and you tell me, remember you prophesied. I want to meet you in Canada and you tell me, mom, I had your word and I moved in the name of Jesus. Doing business. We are meeting at the airport. Uh -huh. Crisscrossing each other from first class. My, what are you doing? What are you saying? What are you talking about? That, those are the kind of daughters I'm raising. I'm raising dynamites in the kingdom of God. I'm raising people that will be so blessed that they'll be needed. Somebody say amen. Yeah, you, I'm not raising people that are, 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 are liabilities. I'm raising assets. Yeah. Assets that people will be looking at you and wanting you to be there, to be in their corner because they know the kind of level, how you speak. You just exude wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. Everything you say is full of wisdom. Somebody say amen. Yeah. So to arise, number one, means to distinguish yourself. Moses said, if you don't go with us, how will we be distinguished? from the rest. For you to stand out, you have to arise. When you arise, that's the only time you begin to shine because you distinguish yourself. And number two, to arise means to be honored. Regarded with respect. When you arise, you cannot be unnoticed. I declare you will not just be a daughter of Zion just sitting in a pew. You will be noticed in Jesus' name. 
because you're about to arise. Somebody say amen. amen. Number three, arise means that you become a best setter among your equals. You become a best setter among your equals, a person in the lead. You determine how this race is going to be run. You're not waiting for people to run your race and show you how to run. You're determining how this race is going to be run. You determine the speed. You determine the standard. You determine who's going to be around your journey. When you arise, I want you to understand that you become a pace setter. I want you to know that when we arose, my husband and I, we were first and foremost very young. When we started JCC, we were very young. The people were looking at us and wondering, how are these kids going to even do this? But we arose and became pace setters. Now we see others who are arising behind us, and many of them are calling us and saying, we've learned so much from you. The other day, I met a wonderful man of God. How many of you, know, I, I know you know uh, 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 um, uh, Archbishop uh, Harrison Nganga. I met him the other day. You know what he told me? He was told, go and see how churches are done. And he came to Tintin. And he sat at the back. And he sat there on Sunday after Sunday to see how churches are done. You saw me at night. You don't know me. So hear me today. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. When you become a pace setter, you don't even know who's going to come and sit in your midst. To begin to learn from you. You must be a pace setter as a woman who doesn't just sleep with anything and anyhow. You are a person who is a pace setter. You take care of your body because it belongs to Jehovah. Because come on somebody, you don't just go giving yourself to anybody. You don't go breaking your heart in many pieces because you don't even know where it should go. You are a pace setter. And so uh, when you arise, you become a pace setter. Somebody say amen. People begin to look and, and emulate what you're doing. What Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Am I talking to somebody? And so you become a pace setter. Number four, you refuse the poverty as a culture. You refuse poverty as a culture. Listen to me. When you arise, you dictate what will be the norm. So you change your status. You refuse poverty as a, as a culture. That now, you know us, this is just, a, no, 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 this is not just the way you are. When you refuse something, it also refuses you. Oh yeah, you must reject poverty. Poverty is a demonic spirit. It's a demon spirit from hell. And you must rise up and declare to it in the name of Jesus, you're checking out of my life. You're checking out of my life forever. Somebody say amen. And you begin to, show, to ask God to show you what to do. He's going to show you. He's an amazing God. Somebody say, arise. arise. Uh -huh. you, you will not accept a, a, a low class as the norm. It's not the norm. No. Read the Bible and see. Uh -uh. There was one poor man who gave dangerous wisdom. But as soon as he gave it, he was forgotten. When you read the rest, you realize God is a blesser. God is a blesser. Don't let the devil lie to you. God is a blesser. And I declare you shall be blessed with the blessing of the Lord that maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. Somebody say amen. In fact, these daughters of Zion Convention, I'm bringing a woman that is so powerful. She's from Tanzania. And that woman is so powerful, she owns many hotels. She's going to show you how to do business for the kingdom. Somebody say amen. Owns many hotels. These daughters of Zion Convention, hey, we are going to start registering today. Let me tell you, it's going to be dangerous. Dr. Cindy Trim has already confirmed. I'm coming. I'll, I'll be telling you at the end of it. At the end of it all. But tell your neighbor, arise. Tell them, arise. Number five is to be lifted above unbelievers. Yes, as a child of God, there's got to be a demarcation. You cannot be a child of God and a sinner operating the same. He's a lie. The devil is a liar. So is his mother-in-law. Your marriage will not work like the world. Your finances will not work the way the world finances are working. You are a tither in the kingdom of God. So God fights for you. It's got to be different. Somebody say amen. First Peter chapter nine, 2 and verse 9, the Bible says, But you are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Uh -huh. His own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Meaning you are peculiar. You cannot be the same as the world. I declare as a daughter of Zion, there will be a demarcation. Number six, uh, 
you arise, when you arise, you rewrite your family history. Amen. You rewrite. That is exactly what Sarah, uh, uh, sorry, not Sarah, Esther did. Esther rose up. She became and she rewrote. Today I declare in the name of Jesus, you're going to rewrite your family history. Uh -huh. Whatever was happening that was abnormal yet accepted. And then you're saying, this is just how we are as a family. I cancel it today. In the name of Jesus. Your great grandmother having done it, and then your grandmother having done it, and your mother having done it, does not mean you have to repeat it. You have to rise up and declare this direction. I'm not going. My husband woke up and he saw that the way the father was treating the mother is not the way he wanted to treat his wife. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Are you hearing me? Can, one slap, my husband would have killed me. One slap, like, can you imagine? The, can, see how tall he is. See how big that man is. Do you understand? So what am I saying? He decided, you know what? I will not do it the way my father did it. My father was abusive to my mother, but I'm not going to be abusive to my wife. So what am I going to do? I'm going to refuse the status quo and rewrite history. I declare in the name of Jesus, you are rewriting history over your finances. You will not walk in poverty the way they've walked in poverty before. You will not divorce the way they have divorced in your family. Hey, you will not be losing business the way they've lost business in their family. You will not be losing money because your family loses money. You will not be kept in houses. You will own houses in Jesus' name. I declare you will not just be renting. This is the season of ownership. My God, let me drop that like it's hot. This is the season of ownership. The season of ownership has arrived. I declare God will give you land that you did not even pay for. I declare houses that you did not build. Let me rise up to declare you're getting keys in the name of Jesus. Some of the things we do, they look stupid. But I want you to understand that God uses the foolish things to confound the wise. I declare in Jesus' name that God will dug all keys over your life. Some of you think you have to work for 20 years. But when favor hits you, look at Esther. Look at Esther. Look at Esther. Three day prayer. Six months of preparation. After that, look at what God did. She rises up. And Bible says she was favored. Not just by the king, but everybody she met favored her. And what did favor do? It ushered her to greatness, to rewrite history. I want you to know that when God hits you with favor, you rewrite history urgently. So this is the time to get ready. This is the time to get ready. Listen, don't practice it when you're there. You practice it before you get there. Practice how you'll be walking to your mansion. Practice how many bedrooms it will be. Practice what kind of a car you want to drive. Practice how your husband will look. Practice how you will walk down the aisle. Practice how you will look when you're pregnant. Practice it in the name of Jesus. Practice how beautiful your children will be. Practice how blessed you shall look when you're blessed. Listen to me, this is the hour. Don't wait until you're pregnant to start. No, begin to practice. God, I thank you. It shall be like this. Am I talking to somebody? Because some of you will get speed like you have never imagined possible. I tell you in the next year, some of you will testify so many times. You will get tired of testimony. You will be sitting and saying, I can't even talk much. You will say, number one, <laughs> number two, she didn't even give us number two. Let me tell you, this girl has testimonies that are dangerous. I want to let you know your testimonies are coming. Tell your neighbor, I'm rewriting history. Say, I'm arising to rewrite my history. When you arise, you begin to change your story. Don't allow the past story. You know, people know you by <laughs> many times when you are suffering. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Margaret Kinyozi. But I want to let you know that the, the, <laughs> there is a way God can raise you. Like Joseph, you start introducing yourself to your brothers. I declare you will reintroduce yourself after you write, rewriting your history. Somebody say hallelujah. Joseph had to reintroduce himself. The brothers were there looking at him. He, he, they could not tell that this was Joseph. Can you imagine? He's serving them and they have no idea it's him. Because the blessing. In our Shanga Kila Kitu. The blessing of the Lord. 
It maketh rich and addeth no sorrow with it. Let me tell you, it washes even pimples. Some of you, 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 you are suffering pimple. Let me tell you, God will bless you. People will find another ch check out and find another entry. Am I talking to somebody? I'm telling you. Eh, you are asking people, ask, ah, what have you put on your face? Imagine I just wash, I just wash. I'm telling you. <laughs> tell your neighbor I'm rewriting history. My family history is not going to be finishing me. That I'm just uh, the one being looked down upon. That people around you, they know that family. Oh, well, leave that family alone, leave that family alone. They will be running to your family because of you. Because you will rewrite it. Am I talking to somebody? Arise is a sign of life. Arise is a sign of life. Only the living can arise. You cannot arise when you're dead. Only the living can arise. And that's why Isaiah 38, when you read from 18 and 19, I'm just going to paraphrase very quickly. For the grave cannot praise thee. Death cannot celebrate thee. The living, he shall praise thee as I do this day. And when you look at that last Psalm, 150 verse 6, the Bible says for, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. You listen to me, as long as you have breath, you can arise. As long as you have breath, you are qualified to arise. So I refuse for you to sit in the same story. That story is not your story. I erase it from your life in Jesus' name. Oh God, I wish I had a witness in the house. I said, I erase it from your life on this Easter Saturday. I erase it from your life. Somebody say amen. amen. All you have to do is praise the Lord. Let everything that has what? Breath. Praise the Lord. As you praise the Lord, you will begin to get blessed and you begin to arise and see God do great and mighty things over your life. So everybody in life, as long as you're doing, <sighs> breathe, let's see. <sighs> yes, you have a chance to arise. You are arising from today. Amen. Yes, we refuse for the mindset to keep you down. Amen. Your mind must change. Somebody say amen. amen. And then the second thing is, the Bible says is shine. So not only do you arise, arise, comma, shine. You are commanded to shine. You see, the validity of a statement depends on who said it. If God said you're shining, hey, the people that ignored you, they have no idea that you are about to shine on their television. They have no idea you are about to shine on their tables of meeting. You are, ah, the people that ignored you don't understand that their boss is about to call you for an engagement at a conference table because of where God is taking you. Somebody say, I am shining. The command to shine originated from God, so he backs it up with his light. I want you to understand that you're coming out of every darkness. And we're going to look at darkness in a short time. Shine means to emit rays of light. It means to emit rays of light or to give light, to, to beam with steady radiance, to exhibit a, a lightness or splendor. It means to shine like day shines or the moon shines at night. It means to shine like the sun shines during the day. You cannot be ignored as long as God has said shine. Listen to me. Shining means that there was a closed curtain. Now it has opened. Let me tell you, when this curtain is closed, you have no idea what is coming from the back. But once it's open, the shining begins. Let me declare that curtains are opening over you today because you must shine in the name of Jesus. I wish I had a witness to say, yeah. yeah. Let me declare that you're shining in the marketplace. Let me say you're shining at your place of work. Let me say you're shining in your business. They will pass other businesses to get to you because of the shining. When Jesus was born, there was a star that was shining that led everybody. May you shine until everybody is led to you. That is bringing favor because they'll be carrying your gifts to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me submit to somebody. You have not paid the price in vain. The Bible says, arise, you have arose, arisen. Now, it's time for you to shine. You will not just arise and just be ignored. No, you will shine because God will give you victory over your peers. I declare in the name of Jesus that as you shine, God will give you wisdom to shine with. Whatever you open your mouth to say, it will be filled with wisdom. 
Somebody say hallelujah. Listen, you will shine for your next level. You will shine for where it is that you're going. You will be the light that shines the way for others to follow. When they know that you have passed there, they will know it is a good sight because they know that you shine the light for victory. I declare victory, victory, victory over every daughter of Zion. You have come today on Easter, on a Saturday. Hi, let me tell you, even the devil will know. He will pay a big price for what you have done today. The way you have come, you are changing the entire history around you. You will shine. Somebody say shine. Look at three people around you, just tell them, shine, 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 shine. And why does the Bible tell us to shine? It says, for your light. How could I preach this message on another day? Who is your light? Jesus. My God, your light is who? Jesus. The Lord is your light. So hear me today. The main reason why people should arise and shine is because they are light. Jesus has come. And I want you to know this is the weekend. This is the weekend that was the weekend of reckoning. Because this is the weekend 2,000 years ago that he went down to pay the price for you. Let me submit to somebody in this house. Your price has already been paid for your shining. So you have no reason but to shine. Somebody say hallelujah. The Bible says what arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of God has risen upon you. The light referred here is the Messiah who is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Malachi chapter 4 and verse 6 refers to him as the Son of Righteousness. The Son of Righteousness. Jesus Christ aptly described himself as the light of the world. Two times in the Bible, in scripture, then Jesus spake again unto them saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. John 9 and verse 5. Wherever Jesus is, there is light. He radiates light. And so today I want to let you know as long as you walk with him, and I'm going to come into how we are going to arise, I want you to know that you will radiate the light of God because of he that is in you. He that is in you will dispel every darkness. Somebody say hallelujah. So he has the capability to give you divine light. From any darkness. Jesus brings us spiritual illumination. Write it down very clearly. He brings us spiritual illumination and guidance that leads us into all truth. That is why when you say our light has come, Jesus, he has come to illuminate every spiritual uh, uh, alignment and guide us into all truth. And second thing is that Jesus gives us moral guidance. He gives us moral guidance. In other words, his life dispels darkness. Everything that, dark, that is darkened morally, God, Jesus Christ, dispels it through his light. And so you begin to walk in the light of God. Jesus reveals the nature of God's love over our lives. And he leads us to spiritual transformation and eternal life. This is what Jesus does. So Jesus liberates us from sin. The reason why we must attach our ourselves and uh, completely be joined to this Jesus is because he is the one that helps us to walk away from sin. He liberates us from sin. Why? Because the light exposes anything that is hidden. Light exposes anything that is ungodly. And so Jesus Christ is the one that is the light that has come so we are enabled to be able to walk in the light and he is able to show us who the father is. Somebody say amen. Amen. Lift up your voice and shout, Jesus. Jesus. I, I can't hear you very well. Say, Jesus. Jesus. Let every devil in hell know that you know Jesus. Jesus. Shout it like a daughter of Zion. Jesus. Say it one more time. Jesus. When you walk with this Jesus, everything must change. Somebody say, Amen. amen. Then the Bible says, darkness shall cover, or dar darkness shall cover the earth. That's what the Bible says. Darkness shall cover the earth. So I want us to look at the target of darkness. What is that? Why is God saying that darkness shall cover the earth? Why? Because darkness comes to cover glorious destinies of God's people. Darkness comes to cover glorious destinies of God's people. And look at a person who wants to shine. And darkness comes and covers their, their, their light. So you find that somebody is so anointed, but they are not moving. Because darkness has covered them. Today, in the name of Jesus, we are dealing with it. 
Every darkness that has covered any child of God in this house, we are dealing with it. Somebody say amen. Uh -huh. So the, 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 the targeted darkness is so that you don't see the light of where you are going and what it is that God has created you to do. A lot of people are existing, but they are not living. You're just existing. You're just there, just existing. You go unnoticed. Nothing is happening over your life. Why? Because of the darkness. We declare that, you know, le let me tell you, it's not just saying I'm born again, I'm born again. The Bible says you shall know them by their fruit. Let me submit to somebody in this house. This year, this year, this year, we, t we say to God what? Give us one more year. See, see, that's what we said in January. We said give us one more year. One more God. Please give us one more year. Don't cut us off. Give us one more year. And we said what? We are coming back with substance. We are digging out everything that needs to be dug out. We are digging out all these things, the bitterness and anger and animosity that holds us back from achieving what God has for us. This year, you must be fruitful. Yeah. I'm going to try that one just one more time. I said this year, you must be fruitful. Yeah. How can you go unnoticed because of darkness? That devil is light. We shall walk in the light of your way. A lot of people are qualified for jobs, but they are jobless. Why? Cover. Darkness. Covering. Refusing for you to be seen. We have come here for that. The reason I'm here is for that. Every person, everything that has tied your, you, 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 your breakthrough, everything that covers you from being seen, I declare in the name of Jesus, today it dies. Whatever it is that stops you from getting engaged. Hey! A beautiful girl that nobody even looks your direction. We are covering that darkness with the blood of Jesus and declaring today you, you shall see light over that area in Jesus name. How? A beautiful girl who you dress up so well. You walk swinging from Cape Town to Cairo and nobody even looks to in a manner likely to suggest that they like you. Hey! I declare you will have inky inky punky to choose from. Let me say that one more time. You will have trouble choosing. You be coming to Pastor Caro telling a Pastor Caro I need help. I have six men here. All of them are proposing what do I do? Please pray with me so we know which one. I declare in the name of Jesus that shall be your story. Every darkness that has covered we are removing it now. Amen. With the light of God. Somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Can you imagine you're, so, you're overqualified for a job? They even call you and tell you, I'm sorry you are overqualified. What? What? But they never call you back again. You have 50 CVs everywhere. Some of you say you even have 200 CVs in offices everywhere. And all of them, you qualify for that job. But nobody ever calls you. No. What? That darkness is not your portion. I think darkness has covered it. So that now it's impossible for anybody to see you. That you, the, the, the other day, we were told this story, I'm telling you. <laughs> this is so funny. It's Archbishop uh, Harrison. We were sitting with him the other day and in a meeting. And he was telling us a story of how one of the daughters was a very pretty daughter. And nothing was happening. She was just hitting all she was growing in his ears. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you will get it on your way out. She was not growing in anything else, just ears. And so he's like, How come no one asked you? So she, listen, she had already said, Oh, you know, she had cast herself. So she was always saying, I forget here, there are no men, useless people. You know, I can't even find here. Look at this church, it has no men. Ah, I'm just even, what, what, what? Let me tell you, he told her to come forth and repent at the altar. She went and repented at the altar and said, I repent today <laughs> for all the things I've said <laughs> concerning men. <laughs> Did you know that that week she got engaged? Listen, listen, this is a true story. Listen, so she got engaged by one of his sons that were in the house. And so he asked the son, so why did you have to wait? Do you know what he said? For three years, I've been coming close to her because I've liked her. But the minute I get close to her, something stops me. 
I go back. Three good years. She had been covered. Let me submit to somebody in this house. I declare in the name of Jesus. Today every cover. We are dispelling it right now in the name of Jesus. We are coming against every cover of darkness from hell. We declare the children of God shall get married at the right time to the right people. Nothing shall cover them from you in Jesus name. We declare your job shall be your job. Your business shall work in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is that belongs to you, it shall find you. Somebody say hallelujah. A lot of people sanctified, but no placement in life because of darkness. No placement. No placement. Nowhere. You are nowhere. You are not placed anywhere. You walk with God. Some of you are even virgins. God bless you. God bless you. You know, and you can't even, nothing, nothing. You just, nobody even looks your direction. That devil lied. Somebody say amen. amen. From today, that shall not be your story. Amen. You shall not be the one saying, oh, they don't look at me. They will look at you until you won't even know what to do with yourself. Amen. What are some of the things that cover destiny? Satanic veils. Write it down very clearly. Satanic veils. Isaiah 25 and verse 7. You can read verse 7 and 8 when you get home. Because of time, I won't read all. The Bible says, on this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all people. The sheet that covers all nations. When you continue reading, you'll read verse 8 when you get home. But I don't have time for that. But I want you to understand that satanic covers, satanic veils, they cover people from getting a hold of what belongs to them. Another one is family wickedness. Psalm 105. Verse 17 to 21, you read about Joseph, family wickedness. People that now uh, uh, do things to you as a family. And you find that in a particular family, things go up to a certain level and they never move on. And you know what? It's time for you as a child of God to begin to look and see what is this? That every time people get married, in two years they are divorced. What is this? That people get pregnant and in six months the baby comes out. What is this? That this, we, we get jobs and in six months we've lost the jobs. What is this? You must understand if it's family wickedness, deal with it. Deal with it. Uh -huh. These are things that cover destinies. Number three, evil devices. According to Jeremiah 11 and verse 19. Evil devices. Jeremiah 11 and verse 19. All these scriptures you'll, be going, you'll go and read. You can put them up there. But they'll go and read, it, read them when they get home. Uh -huh. You must understand and destroy everything, every device, every wickedness that comes to destroy what God has in store for you. Number, uh, what, whatever number is negative backgrounds. First Samuel chapter 9 and verse 21. Negative background. Satanic things that hold you and cover what it is that God has for you. Negative background. I'm not a Benjamite. I'm the smallest in my tribe. No, 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 no. Negative background. Number what? Whatever number. I'm surrounded by demonic environments. According to Acts chapter 8 and verse 9. Acts chapter 8 and verse 9. These are the things that cover the people of God from progressing and becoming all that they were created to become. Demonic environment. You remember this story of the sorcerer. And so you must understand what it is that has covered your destiny that needs to get out in the name of Jesus. And the last one, number six, is sin. Sin. Sin is another thing that covers. It covers. When you're living in sin, it's not possible for you to progress in the things of God. Those two don't merge. They don't work. They don't align. They don't work together. Darkness and light can never, ever work together. In this life, God will never accept sin. Believe me, there is no way you will be accompanied by sin into his presence. It's not true. You must deal with it. Every sin that so easily besets you, get a hold of it today and deal with it. Because Jesus has given you the power to do it. Somebody say amen. amen. Living without sex has never killed anybody. Keep looking at me. Nobody will know I'm talking to you. <laughs> Tell your neighbor you can close the shop until you get married. You'll be fine. You will not die. And plus the few men that are here. 
I promise you, nobody was ever taken to ICU wako na moto sana. This one is ICU material. They are too hot, too hot. Too hot to handle. No. No, I never died. You, you, you handle yourself. Somebody say amen. And in the fullness of time, you shall enjoy. This thing never ends. It never ends. It never grows old. So don't mess up yourself just because of that thing. Just wait until you walk down the aisle. And God is going to bless you and bless your union. Somebody say amen. amen. Yes, and then you will have it until you're tired. You'll be looking at each other. Hey, tena, tena. <laughs> How do you arise and shine? <laughs> How do you arise and shine? <laughs> Listen carefully. You see, God has already made the provision for us to arise and shine. Remember we said it's a command. And so God backs up his command with his word. He's so powerful that he can't say something that you cannot do. He says only what he allows you to do and enables you. So you can achieve it. So somebody say, I'm arising. Amen. Uh -huh. So you have to take an action. See, they, they, when, when you see a light, like this beautiful light here. The, the, it's light, it's lit now because somebody took an action and went and put on the light. They put on the switch. Right now, if you put off the switch, the lights will still be there. But because they, they, they've been put off, you will not be able to see the light. But the minute the switch is put on, you see the light. So what does that say? That we must take action. The Bible says faith without works is dead. So you must take action and go to the source and put it on for you to enjoy the light. And so I want us to talk about five things that will help us and enable us to arise and shine. Number one is you must connect with Christ. You must connect with Christ. He is the vine. You must as a branch connect with him. Before any object can shine, there has to be a source of reflection of light to that object. In other words, it is reflected light that makes it come to life. So you must allow Jesus Christ who is the light of the world according to uh, John chapter 8 and verse 12 and according to John chapter 9 and verse 5. He declares without me you can do nothing according to John chapter 15 and verse 5. You can do nothing without him. And so you must determine that whatever you do must come from the source Jesus Christ. In order to shine therefore you must be connected. If you're not connected to him, it's impossible for you to become everything that he desires for you to become. And by being connected to him, what does he say? It is when you do what he asks you to do. So connection is not just I'm born again, I'm born again. That's good enough. But you must come back and do as he says. When he commands, do this, then you must be able to do it as, a, as somebody who is connected to Jesus Christ. Somebody say, Father, help me connect very well. Mm -hmm. And so you must understand that his power, his power can raise the dead to life again. But you must be connected in order for that rising to happen. So connect to Christ. It is very important. Connect with Jesus Christ today and receive power to resurrect things that are dead over your life. He is the one that is the resurrection, the truth and the life. And so you must connect to him. Number two, you must eat the word. For you to arise, you must eat the word. Eat the word. Eat the word. The word empowers you to arise. Let the word be your friend. By the way, I took it upon myself. You know, uh, Bishop, uh, Pastor Benny Hinn said something very powerful. Uh, and, and, and he said, uh, you know, uh, 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 that, that he reads the Bible. He's 71 years old. 71. Meaning I'm a toddler. <laughs> you, you are a fetus. <laughs> Do you understand? He's 71 years old. At 71, he reads the Bible four times in a year. Jesus. So every four months, he clears the Bible, picks it again, another four months. I took it upon myself to make sure four months, if 71 can do it, 
me, baby. Eh? You feathers. <laughs> you should show us dust and do it in two months. Like read it. Let the word become your life. Let it become your everything. That you're eating the word. Somebody say, help me eat it. Because the word gives you insight into God. The word gives you insight into his will. The word gives you enablement. You align your actions according to the word. The word helps you to transform and break limitations over your life. Did you know that your limitations can be broken like this by the word? Remember the limitations that my husband had where a husband was concerned. And they were broken by the word. He understood husbands love your wives as Christ loves the church. And he took the word, ate it. And as a result, he is who he is today. 30 years later, who's laughing now? <laughs> Why? Because somebody took the word. So the word helps you to deal with patterns. What patterns are you walking in that are not godly? They are not broken by anything else. They are broken by the word. Father, you say this is a temple of the Holy Spirit. This one is a temple of the Holy Spirit. From today in the name of Jesus, nothing, I will allow nothing to be touching me anyhow. From today, I will take care of this temple because it's a temple of the Holy Ghost. Are we talking? So when you begin to now allow the word to clean you, you will be surprised at how clean you will be. The word serves as a lamp, so it guides you. And it, it serves as a light, so it illuminates your path. The word gives you clarity of direction. You don't just wish you wash, go anywhere. It gives you clarity. This is the way to go, walk in it. The word of God has all the divine rays of light that can make you arise and shine if you use it faithfully. So use the word of God and you'll be surprised at what you will become before you know it. The centurion knew the power in the word of God. And this is what he said. Speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 8. Speak the word only and thy, my servant shall be healed. Jesus healed the servant immediately because of somebody knowing the power of the word. Do you know the power of the word that you read? Don't just read it as, a, as water passing. What did Jeremiah say? Jeremiah 15 and verse 16. He says, thy words were found and I did eat them. He made the word his food. He ate the word. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by thy name. So what did he do? He started eating the word. Ask your neighbor, apart from chips. Your word is a lamb unto my feet and a light unto my path. Ask your neighbor again, apart from chips, what are you eating? What else are you eating? <laughs> the word promises us good success. It says what? Let, don't let it depart from you. Day and night meditate on it. And you shall what? Live a prosperous life. So even success comes from the word. Some of you are struggling for success. Read the word. You'll be surprised. That your answer is in the word. Somebody say, help me, Jesus. Am I helping somebody today? These are the, re this is a, are the ways for you to arise. It is obvious, therefore, that one of the strategies of, of, of achieving arise and shine is to create an affinity for the word of God. Create an affinity for the word of God. To the point that it becomes indispensable in your life. That you love it so much, you eat of it, you wake up the word, you, you speak the word. Wherever you go, it's the word, the word, the word, the word. When it becomes your everything, I tell you, you will be unstoppable. You will go anywhere, you will do anything in life. The word, the word, somebody say the word. I didn't hear you say a better the word. Lift it up and say with a gasto, the word. Put a base in it, the word. <laughs> Number three, work work. Many want to arise, but they want to be lazy. It doesn't work. Tell your neighbor for me, now it's me, you it's me. It was me, it was me, it was me. Those of you who are watching us, work. The Bible says, faith without works is dead. Listen, according to James chapter 2 and verse 20, any member of the household of faith who does not want to remain cast down 
must be prepared to work. And God, you see many people think that work is just coming to preach or just going to an office and reporting somewhere from 8 to 5 or what. But work involves God. I want you to understand that the reason why he even gave you must know that your work is critical to God. That is why he says he blesses the work of your hands. He doesn't just bless hands. So you can do your nails all you want. <laughs> He's not looking at the nails and saying, wow, now wow. No. That's why in January we read how he wanted to cut off that tree because it wasn't bringing forth. God is not impressed by our hips. He's not impressed by our looks. He's not impressed by the makeup artists that make our faces and beat, beat our faces very well. He's not impressed by our hairdos and our, our dressing. He is impressed by what you do that affects the kingdom. What are you doing that affects the kingdom? How is your business kingdom? How is it affecting kingdom? If all you're doing is paying rent, what does that have to do with God? Can we talk? Let's keep it real. Because this real is what will make you in April to come with substance. To arise and become all you are created to arise, to, to become. You cannot arise without working. You've got to beat on yourself. Pick up yourself and declare from today. I refuse to go to bed the way I woke up. That you wake up one hour, you are even yawning because the hours are really pushing. They are, they are dragging. Two hours, you are looking at, oh my gosh, I cannot believe it's 3 p.m. <laughs> what will I do until 10 <laughs> to sleep? What? Well, some of us are praying for more hours to arrive. Like God, like this day has just passed so quickly. Oh my gosh, I didn't even finish this. I needed to do this. Do you understand? May God give you work. That you work as unto the Lord in the name of Jesus. That God will see you fruitful for the kingdom of God. You know what I love? Stella, stand. Stella, stand. You know what I love about what you said? You said that you are a soul winner. Did you know that all of us are? Did you know that all of us are supposed to be? So, all of us, look at the evangelist has stood up. She has won 442 souls this weekend from Wednesday, Thursday, Friday three days 442 souls, what? and she, God is clapping for her, do you understand me? you, you are sitting, your brother, your own brother is not born again your sister is not even born again you just go there and show yourself and say God is good as you roll your hair and walk <laughs> and God is looking at like I took you there so that you could minister to them. To say you are God. You are showing them pride. That you, you are just drinking nonsense man. Continue drinking, you go to hell. <laughs> and God took you there. To show the love of God. And shine the love of God on that drunkard. God took you there. To shine the love of God on that husband. Who is not born again. How are you shining the light of God? When he comes in, Pepo Nyausinyakudu, useless man. When people are standing, you're also standing as a man. Sit down. What? <laughs> that the names you call him, you can never even, he's like, Ati born again, you people joke. <laughs> Ati, my wife is born again. What? I saw her on television saying, hallelujah. <laughs> I was watching YouTube, and I saw her doing hallelujah, and I'm like, huh? Yani, do these people know who that is? God forgive you. The work is to win souls. The people around you that are not born again, they are your work. That's your work, your responsibility. If they are not born again, their blood is on you. You must stand and tell them all the time about Christ. Work. Somebody say work. work. How is your work and kingdom affecting each other? How is God being blessed by what you're doing? Jesus said, I have finished the work I have glorified you. I have finished the work that you gave me. What work are you doing that affects the kingdom of heaven? Right now, I'm working. Kingdom is getting affected. Because you will never be the same again. Because from here, you're going to win souls. 
I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, all of you must win souls. Amen. In Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. From today, win souls. The Bible says what? Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16. In fact, let's read it together. Matthew 5, 16. Somebody say work. 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 As a believer, your work is what will make you shine. Read. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. Tell your neighbor, they are not glorified by your looks. God is glorified by your works. And you know what? Your light shines because of your work. Somebody say amen. From today, you will not be yawning and saying that it's 10 a.m. <laughs> and you're wondering how I could look at Work is a part of God's kingdom agenda. And it glorifies God. And so God wants you to work. Don't belittle work, the work God has given you. Work as unto the Lord. Wherever it is that you work, do it as unto the Lord. Do it so immaculately that heaven is clapping for you. Don't go to work and work as unto the boss. Don't work as unto the boss. That when the boss is there, you're, you're really busy. You're just turning pages. The boss is and I scared to... When they are not there, oh, Kumedwa. Kumedwa, useless man. He has taken so long in the office today. What? And then you're there sitting, talking, and you're saying, they don't even add salary. These people, they don't. <laughs> they never add salary. And God is looking and thinking, you, I'm not about to add your salary. I'm about to sack you. <laughs> May God help you. Somebody lift up your voice and say, help me to work. Number four, righteous living. And in the righteous living, I'm going to talk about three things very quickly. Number one, integrity. Living a life that is consistent with the values and the principles of scripture. Being fruitful, being truthful, being sincere in everything that you do. Personal relationships in your business transactions. You are, you are somebody of integrity. You don't borrow money and you're not paying. And you're talking about arise. Arise. God never fails. Jehovah never fails. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never fails. Jehovah never fails. He will do. He's saying he's doing as integrity is being followed. You cannot borrow money as a believer and not pay it back and be cursing at the people you borrowed from. When they are passing, Peter, and you can <laughs> you are cursing at the people you borrowed from. When you're passing each other, you're saying, Shit, we're Peter Uko. Peter. <laughs> when they ask you for your money, you say, Look, the people are so mean. <laughs> they are so mean. When you are asking them for money, you are begging. You are like, You know me, I've never seen a person like you. <laughs> you are so amazing. <laughs> If women were like you, this world will go far. Then now when it comes to time to pay, useless woman, look at her, she just disturbs people. Meanwhile, you owe them. Can you pay? Stop that. If you owe somebody, do you know somebody, something? It is so bad to have people talk ill about you because you borrow from them and never pay them back. Because those words are not just words they drop on you. So you try to succeed, you're not succeeding. Because those words are dropping on you because you're making people cry everywhere. So they are all speaking ill about you. Don't make people speak ill when they have a reason to. Don't give them a reason. Be a woman of integrity. Is it good? Be a woman of integrity. If you borrow from somebody, let God's truth and righteousness stay in place no matter where you are, who you are. Allow God's uh, light to shine with integrity over your life. Have integrity. Number two, have honesty. Be honest. Be honest. This is a fundamental aspect of any Christian character. Be honest. Honesty entails being transparent and forthright. Be honest. Honesty acknowledges mistakes and shortcomings and seeks forgiveness and reconciliation. Be an honest human being. Don't be a person that nobody can detect. Not even the detectives. <laughs> hey, 
hey, FBI can never. <laughs> hey, because you cannot be detected. You must be honest. Be naked and not ashamed. Be naked and not ashamed. That's how you arise. You want to know how to arise? Be honest. Be an honest human being. Don't be a person that really uh, uh, um, aggrieves other people. No, don't be an, a, 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 a person that everybody is aggrieved with. They have grievances because of you. No, be an honest person. Be honest. Be honest. Even in your marriage, be honest. There are so many women now that are not even honest in marriage. Be honest. Be honest. You know when people say, oh, this one is cheating on this one. No, you're cheating on yourself. Be honest. Somebody say amen. amen. Number three, accountability. <laughs> accountability. This involves taking responsibility for your choices. Take responsibility for your choices. Where you are, don't make it a problem for the, that it's the other people's problems, not yours. <laughs> Let me tell you, you must have played a role to get where you are. Everybody plays a role in life to be where they are. So you must be responsible enough with accountability to know why you are where you are and what brought you there and what can you change to change your status. Is this good? Yes. I know. It's good because this is what will change your life. And those of you who are watching us, accountability. Yesterday, our spiritual mother came home. It was such a glorious time, glorious, heavenly. And there was nothing more beautiful than looking at these accountability structures for 38 years. My husband has been accountable to her for 38 years. And she was saying, oh, you are such a great blessing. That me looking at you and seeing that we walked with you from the day you were 19 years old to the time now he's 57 years old has walked with one woman. Accountability. You, the pastor preaches this, you run to the other one. <laughs> and say, what are you doing? What are you doing? You don't know that the Holy Spirit is trying to get you. Because that's what the Holy Spirit does. The, the God will never pick you alone in a multitude of thousands and talk just about you. When you hear something being said, it's the Holy Spirit getting to you. And you need to get a hold of that word. And be accountable. Somebody say accountability. And I was looking at this accountability structure for 38 years and getting amazed. And seeing the way God has made JCC what it is because of accountability. There is nothing more beautiful than accountability. That somebody can call you out and say, Joan, stop it. And you can listen and stop. If nobody can call you out, my friend, you're in trouble. Hear me, if your marriage, nobody talks to you, you are in trouble. Whenever we've had any issue that both my husband and I cannot deal with, I have called mom. Mom has come to our house at 2 a.m. Say, talk to your boy. <laughs> Accountability is not... I have a spiritual authority who does not even know you from Adam. Which authority do you have? Are you joking? Are you serious? You fight with your husband like cats and dogs. Your authority has no clue that you're fighting. And you're saying, I have <laughs> Then you tell each other, if you say, I'm leaving. And you believe. Then you, do, you, you close your accountability structures because they are, they are threats. Those are the threats to report. <laughs> Spiritual growth and maturity come through accountability. You've got to be accountable. Don't be a person that is accountable to nothing. That you're a single girl who lives by yourself. Nobody knows your house because you better die than for them to know. You wait until it's dark like this, like this. You look around to see. This. <laughs> if no one is looking to Bulu, you enter the house. You ensure nobody knows your house. So when you come out of a matatu with the same people, 
you look at them, watch, they don't know you're watching them, to see them disappear. When they disappear, you, end, you appear in your house. Because you can never allow anybody to know your house. Hey, as a young lady, you need to be accountable to who comes to your house. Hey, that's the accountability we are talking about. My friend, this body is not wood. Two men have started coming to your house. Before you know it, you are inky, inky, ponky, who is better than the other. You need to be accountable. Tell your neighbor, be accountable. This means you take responsibility and honor what God honors. That's the only way that you're going to honor. To align yourself with what pleases God, you need to be accountable. His truth and wisdom shapes your attitude when you're accountable. Your desires and priorities must be surrendered to the great I am because of accountability. Where you say, at this time, I don't pick phone calls from Mutejas. <laughs> it's too late for me. From this time, I don't allow anybody to just walk into my house. Now, how did you come? You're knocking at my door. This is a man. He's six foot one, very handsome. How did you find my house? Who are you with? I, I will not allow you in. Let me come out and talk to you from outside there. How many women have allowed? And before, oh, I'm sorry, I don't know what happened. Oh, he? <laughs> what else was to happen, my friend? This body is not wood. You have never been touched like this for 15 years. Eh? Now this man looking like a, 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 a drilling oil. And Yanni, you can just see honey dripping. Eh? And you have allowed you have the one who opened the door yourself. Hey, my friend, you won't know what hit you, but something will hit you. <laughs> to arise, righteous living. <laughs> righteous living must be the focal point of your life in order for you to arise and shine. Always strive to be in right standing with God. Your conversations, your deeds, the people around you, always strive to be in right standing with God. Speaking through King Solomon, the word of God indicates that the righteous, the Bible says the righteous, uh, according to Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18, the, the Bible says, but the path of the righteous or the just is as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter or more and more unto a perfect day. The power to live righteously has been given through Jesus Christ. And so we must allow him to shine through us to live a righteous life. Somebody say amen. amen. If you use it, if you use the name of Jesus and the word of God, you will live a righteous life. It's going to be all good. And number five, the last one is speak and declare. And that's what we're going to do before we leave this place tonight. Speak and declare. Another way to appropriate the blessing of God is to speak and declare what it is that you want to do. In other words, use your tongue for your advantage. Don't use your tongue for your disadvantage. Don't be somebody, I was telling somebody today, I was saying, don't, don't allow yourself to get blessed like this uh, 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 and then you, you keep speaking negative things because words are very powerful. Words are very powerful. Please remember this. Words are powerful. Don't joke with words because words are not just there for communication. They are there for creation. So whatever you speak, you create. So if you rise up and say, ah, I just feel this, you start feeling that because you're creating. You must rise up and begin to speak what you want to see. You must rise up and declare what it is that you desire to see over your life. Stop being negative and speaking negative about everything. Somebody say amen. amen. Lift up your voice and say, my mouth amen. shall work for my advantage. Amen. The Bible says what? Job chapter 22 and verse 28. The Bible says what? Thou shall decree a thing and it shall be what? Established unto thee and the light shall shine upon thy ways. Light is about to shine upon your ways. But you must decree a thing. Let's read it together. You will also declare a thing. And it will be established for you. So light will shine on your ways. Today you will declare it. And light will begin to shine on your way in Jesus name. And somebody say amen. 
How many of you remember the Shunammite woman? The Bible says her son died. And when he died, what happened? She began to be asked by her husband, is it well? She said, what, it is well. The prophet asked, is it well? What did she say? It is well. I want you to understand that her declaration caused heaven to move. Your declaration will open heavens over your life. Don't be saying my marriage is so useless. This man can never change. He will never change because you've declared it. But the minute you open your mouth and say one beard cannot defeat my God. This man will change. Let me tell you, God will back you up and that man will change. So don't begin to speak things that you don't want to see over your life. Begin to speak life that you want to see somebody say amen. amen. Lift up your voice and say a better amen in the house of God. Amen. Lift it up and say a better amen in the house of God. Amen. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Today we are speaking life over our lives. Today nothing will die. Today what? The resurrection weekend. It is happening over our lives today. This Saturday the 30th is not a mistake that you're here. The reason you're here is because of the testimony you're about to give of a resurrection. Somebody lift up your voice and say a better amen. amen. Lift it up and say it is well. Say my miracle is here. Say my breakthrough is here. Say, it is time for me. Say, I will be hard. Say, I will go where God says I will. Say, I declare in the name of Jesus. I will not be cut short. Whatever is mine is coming to me. Say, whatever God has declared over me is happening over my life. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and declare today. My life is changing. On this 30th, I resurrect everything that has died over my life as mom declared in the beginning i stand to declare it now with my own mouth that this is my hour i want us to stand up everybody on your feet i want us to do business like we have never done upon those five things today i want us to rise up and declare that whatever god has said is what is going to happen over my life in jesus mighty name that i am arising to become everything that god said i will become i want you to hold two people today i don't want you to do business kawaida no hold two people look at them face to face anna kwa anna no two not three wawili kwa wawili muangaliane nataka vita you know let me tell you some things eh spiritual things eh are spiritually designed are we together there are some forces we talked about darkness there are some forces that have covered you and they have declared you're not moving and hear me they are strongholds so they are not things that will just move at talk una penaka kwangu sana mimi nakwambia leo utatoka no let me tell you they will not talk anywhere they need war. They need declaration. They need fight in the spirit. They need you to raise the gear. So we are not going to pray designer prayers. Toka enda usirudi tena shetani nakwambia nitakusema kwa baba. Ushamsema. Now it's time for you to do business. Are we together? I want you to declare war and fight in the spirit. Declare some of you your relationships are messed up. Some of you, they are messed up. You try to move this direction, they never move. Some of you, nobody is seeing you. Darkness has covered everything. We are displaying the light of God in our lives and dispelling every darkness of our lives in Jesus' name. So when we start to pray, don't be kind. We're going to pray two by two. And then we, we will tell you how to release that hand and begin to pray for yourself. I want you to pray like a person chasing bees. You understand? That bees are there and you are a person chasing them. You declare now, my marriage is not going to the dogs. The devil will not be playing in my marriage the way he wants. My, my house is not a play field for the devil to be playing the way he wants. I declare, how many of you, by a show of hands, how many of you have been looking for jobs for long and they are not coming? Lift your hand. Lift it high, very high like this. You, you, yeah, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Keep it high. Keep it. I want God to see. Keep it. Today, in the name of Jesus, I declare favor. Yes. I declare open doors. Yes. Shalom, are you hearing me? I declare open doors for you. And I declare in the name of Jesus, you will testify. Yes. 
a woman came here. She wrote to me. She wrote to me. This is what she said. She said, Mom, I came. You were talking and you said, you, you people. <laughs> That's how she wrote. That you, 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 you're there with the uh, sponsor. Eh? You're having a sponsor, one pack. And you're, he's the one paying your house. You need to leave. Hey, you know why? Everything we do affects other people. And you must remember that. And so I was saying, it, you, you, you're spoiling some people, somebody's marriage. You need to stop. God has you as, leave it. No. The woman, she had just come from some place to Daughters of Zion. She was like, huh? Then she said, you know what? I'm going to take that word. She went, she called the man. She said, from today, I don't want anything to do with you. He said, and you from today, move from that house. Nonsense. <laughs> so she was thrown out of the house. She chose to come out of the house. She was thrown out of the house. She said to me, Mom, I decided to start from zero because I saw what you said, that I was messing up with somebody else's house. And so even if I was uh, go going to get married, somebody was also going to come and mess up with mine because of the seeds I'm sowing. So I decided to obey and move. That girl is right now in the UK. She is getting married this August and she is coming to get married here. Yeah. She told me, she told me, she wants to come and testify to the daughters of Zion. Because let me tell you, God, he's too good. He's just waiting for you to align. He's waiting for you to align. Stop that sin. Stop those things that easily beset you. Leave them. And you will see God. He's waiting on you. He's going to bless you seriously. So you align with God. So as we pray, don't be nice. And don't cover up. Be accountable. Rise up and declare from today, I refuse to live in that sin. Uh, and if it's other things that are covering you, refuse them. Declare today you're walking in the light of Christ. He died for you and resurrected again so that you may have eternal life. So today as we start to pray, I want you to lose yourself and really go. I we together. Pastor Caro, Pastor Joel, come. Stand here and help me. Take microphone seriously and help me. Gadoni, help me the way you are helping me. I want you to help me. I want you to rise up. I want us to pray in this house. I want you to pray like a warrior in the name of Jesus. Pick up a, 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 a hand. Look at that hand. Begin to declare that they will walk in the ways of God. That from today in the name of Jesus they are rising. They will kanda baksata. One, two, three. Begin now.
Your children will not find the same temple in the name of Jesus. You will not find the same temple that your parents fought in the name of Jesus. Sickness and disease will not take you out in the name of Jesus. You will live a long, satisfied life in the name of Jesus. Oh, it's your season of elevation. You will not be the last when the Bible calls you the pastor. so shall it be, for it cannot be otherwise. Whatever you have agreed, whatever you have decreed, whatever you have declared, I stand to agree with you that so shall it be. I speak fruitfulness over your life. Whatever I prophesied here in the beginning, I declare that your portion in the name of Jesus. No barrenness is allowed in your life. Everything that's dead is resurrecting in your life in the name of Jesus. Everything, everything, everything. Who is that person losing memory? That you're forgetting things very quickly. Who is that person? 
Who is that person? Raise your hand. I want to see you. Come. Come. I want to pray for you. The devil is a liar. In the name of Jesus, I declare right now, memory comes back perfectly. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare sound mind. Oh, the mind of Christ. I declare it over your life right now. In the name of Jesus. I declare it to be so. Come and just raise your hand. I declare. Raise your hand. Raise your hands before God. I declare in the name of Jesus. Memory gets back in line. I declare the mind of Christ. In the name of Jesus. I declare right now. The mind of Christ. The mind of Christ. The mind of Christ. I declare it. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare right now the mind of Christ, 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 the mind of Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare the mind of Christ. Memory, get back in line. Get back in line. I declare in the name of Jesus, in the Holy Ghost. I declare in the name of Jesus, get back in order. In the name of Jesus, I declare the mind of Christ. I declare the mind of Christ. I declare the mind of Christ. I declare get back in line right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you might get back in order. I declare in the name of Jesus, you get back in line. In the name of Jesus, I declare the mind of Christ. I declare the mind of Christ. I declare the mind of Christ right now. In the name of Jesus, right now. In the name of Jesus, the mind of Christ right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, in the name of Jesus, right now, memory, get back in line, in the name of Jesus, the mind of Christ, 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 in the name of Jesus. Jesus, barrenness no more. You're getting children. In the name of Jesus. And I walked up and down with her. And then after a month or so, the doctor calls her and says, that unsuccessful IVF, the last one I did, I want to try one more time. And this time I want to do it for free. I won't even charge you. I'm going to do it for free. I won't charge you anything. Something told her, this is the Holy Ghost. The workings of God are unbelievable. They are amazing. Say to her, don't go. And she wondered, 
what? And it's free. And you know, IVF is very expensive. And she was like, the, the Holy Spirit said, don't go. Don't go. Do not go. And so, the doctor called her three or four times. And she just was like, no, she's not going. And so, at the end of the day, she never went. And she continued working. And then a week later, she felt nausea. She was nauseous. She went to the hospital and discovered that she was pregnant. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the few gentlemen that are here, they had told her it's not possible for her to get pregnant naturally. That's why she was going through IVF. Three failed ones, and the fourth one, she just said no, but it was the Holy Ghost. Because she got pregnant in that season as we prayed. I just want to talk to a woman in this place that's been waiting on God. We have dangerous testimonies of children here. This daughter of mine has never had a period once. Lift your hand, my darling, let them see you. Never had a period once. The doctors have told her she can never. It's not even possible. She had even make, made a pact with her father that she'll not get married because it's not possible for her to get children. It is something that the family knew. Everybody knew. Today, she has Alan, Kathy, and Jeremy. <laughs> never got a pe period once. We have women... Ma Maureen's auntie stayed for how many years? 20 years. No child. Today, does she have or not? There is a God in heaven. Yeah. And he moves supernaturally. Yeah. When it comes to barrenness, that is a dimension that God takes us in. You will not be barren in this house. Yeah. And not only will you not be barren for children, even financially. Yes. You will not be barren in Jesus' name. Yes. This is the weekend of resurrecting. So if you're a woman trusting God for a child, run to, to the front now. If you're a woman trusting God for a child, run. 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 There is fine. There is, okay, come to the altar. It's fine. Come. 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 You can come with your shoes. It's okay. Because the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. Shetana mazakata lagai. He randa bazakande de basia. I want everybody to go in radical prayer. And basakata namaza. Everybody get radical in prayer. And I'm going to ask my daughter. My, my daughter here. Bring her. Come, come. I want you to lay hands on them as well. Randa baza katana mazika. Randa baza katana mazia. Jokara baza katana maza. Manderere bozaya. I want you to lay hands on every stomach in the name of Jesus. Randa baza kata. Randi baza keleba. Raya kana mazande. Ande katala bazaya. I declare children. I declare children in this woman. I declare children in this woman in the name of Jesus. I declare children in this woman in the name of Jesus. I declare children in this womb in the name of Jesus. I declare children in this womb in the name of Jesus. I declare children in this womb in the name of Jesus. I declare children in this womb. 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 I declare in the name of Jesus. Every woman at this altar keeps past. Woman at this altar, I declare you can children. Every woman at this altar, I declare you get pregnant. I declare children in your wombs in the name of Jesus. Some of you will get.
the queens. In the name of Jesus, I stand and declare, so shall it be. Every woman under the sound of my voice on this altar, I declare children in your lives, children in your homes, in the name of Jesus. As you rise up, we declare you will come back to this altar with a testimony with your children. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare so shall it be. So shall it be. In Jesus' name. It cannot be otherwise. So shall it be. In Jesus' name. Some of you will, you will go and discover that you're pregnant. You'll go and discover it. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, we give you praise. Somebody say amen. Amen. The last altar call I'm going to make is for those of you who are here. I believe when we began the, the, the service, sick people were healed. I believe it with all my heart. As we prayed here, sickness disappeared. Today, you will testify. In Jesus' name. You're here and you're not born again. This is your time. Come. I want you to come. I'm going to pray for you. You alone are worthy of my praise. Come. Wherever you are, rise up. Yes, the Lamb of God who sits upon the throne. Come, wherever you are. He alone is worthy of a praise. From the rising of come. the sun. Yes, come. To the setting of the sun. Your name is to be hallowed. surrendering your life to Jesus. He is convicting you right now. Your heart is being convicted. Go, 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 go. That's the Holy Spirit. Come. I'm waiting for you. Come. Come. To the setting I'm waiting on you. Ashes, help me here if you see somebody. Come. Wherever you are. Come. Come. We are going to wait for you at the balcony. We are waiting. Come. Wherever you are, come. From Jesus loves you. Don't go away as a sinner. Come. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. To the there are many being convicted right now. You're being convicted. That's the Holy Spirit. Come. Come. The Holy Spirit is prompting you. Go, 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 go. Come. prompting your spirit to rise up and come, come. I'm going to pray for you. Come, wherever you are. Come. From I'm waiting on you. They are coming. They are coming. They are coming. They are coming. Come. To the setting of the same. Wherever you are, the Holy Spirit is convicting you. Come. He says, come. Rise up and come. Come. Wherever you are, come. From we are waiting on you. Jesus loves you. Come. Come. Wherever you are, rise up. Rise up and come. Come. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Yes, Jesus loves you. Wherever you are. Wherever you are. Wherever you are. Come. Yes, they are coming. They are coming. 
The Holy Ghost is at work. The Holy Spirit is convicting you right now. Your is at work. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Raise them up. Holy Ghost. Speak to them. Holy Ghost. Bring them forward. Salvation. Come, come, come. Jesus loves you. Come. He loves you too much. Come. Wherever you are, come. Rise up and come. Wherever you are, come. Rise up and come. Rise up and come. I feel, I feel you're there. I can't even move on. Because I can see the war. I see the war in your spirit right now. God is convicting you. The Holy Spirit is at work. He's telling you, get up and go. Get up and go. The enemy is telling you, don't, don't, don't. Obey the Holy Ghost. Rise up. Your time for salvation is now. Come. From the rising Come. of the sun. Come. So it's going Come. down. Come, wherever you are, wherever you are, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you right now. Rise up, wherever you are. Come, on the rising of the sun. He sees you. Come, it's going down. Come, your faithfulness is shown. Come, your mercy is new. Come, from the rising of the sun. Till it's going down. Wherever you are, rise up. Rise Your faithfulness up. Come. Now. now. This is the time. Not another time. This is it. Come. There is Your war going on in your spirit. Me like a you are warring right now. My God. You are warring. You are warring. You are warring. Win that war. Rise up and come. Win it. We are giving you one more minute. Win that war, Your yes. Thank you, Jesus. Me like I see war, 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 war. Should I, should I? Oh my God, how, how, how? You will not be the one walking by yourself. You can't. The Holy Ghost will help you. He'll empower you to be able to walk this journey. So don't think of what will I do. Don't worry. He'll help you. Rise up. I see another one. I see another one. I cannot move. I see another one. Rise up, rise up, rise up. Wherever you are, from the back. I see another one. Right at the back. Rise up. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I still see. I still see. I still see. I still see. Right at the back. I still see. Right at the back. You're there wondering, oh my God. Oh my God, there's war. Serious war going on in your spirit right now. You're wondering how, 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 how. Rise up. Rise up. Win that war by rising up and allowing the Holy Spirit to help you. Rise up and come. Rise up and come. Yes. Yes. Yes, that's the one right at the end. Yes, come. Thank you, God. Hey, Jesus. Oh, God, we give you praise. Thank you, Daddy, for souls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight souls have come to Jesus when you put your hands together for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Thank you, Jesus. Heaven is rejoicing right now. The angels are rejoicing right now over these that have come to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Lift up your voice and just shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph. That's why I praise you the way I do. Pastor Zippy. Pray for them and with them. Oh, this is the best decision you have ever made, and you will ever make. This is it. There is no better, greater decision than this one. Okay, and then we're gonna help you walk the journey. So we're gonna give you a book. Oh, there, there, there. we have a book. Just go ahead and give them. We're gonna give you a book to read and see what it is that you've done today, and then we're gonna walk on a journey with you. We have a a, a, a program where we now show you what it is that you did. And how to walk the journey. You're not alone. 
you want to hold your hand because now it's like a newborn baby. You, you don't know what to do. But we'll help you. Hold your hand and walk with you to help you know how to start working the word of God. Amen? And so we're going to walk with you. Pastor Ziti, would you pray with them and for them? Thank you. Repeat this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you today for your love. Thank you so much that you died for me and you rose again that I may live the life that you created me for. Today, I give you my life, I give you my heart, and I ask you, forgive me all my sins. I ask you to cleanse me from all uncleanliness, all unrighteousness. Receive me today as I have received you today. Write my name in the book of life. From today, I'm born again. I will follow you. I will live for you. Precious Holy Spirit, I welcome you in my heart, in my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because of the daughters that have given their lives to Jesus today, O oh Lord. We pray for them, O oh dear Lord. All of us, O oh God, we have a testimony that you have sustained us in salvation. From the dead we got saved, O oh God Almighty. And that is our prayer for them. That you may walk with them. That you may sustain them in salvation. May you shepherd their hearts. May you shepherd their souls, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we pray, King of all the glory, that you may give them eternal life. In the mighty name of Jesus, Satan we rebuke you and all your works are destroyed. The works of the devil in their lives we declare they are destroyed the power of sin is destroyed and we release them to walk in the liberty of salvation, in the liberty of the precious son of the living God. In Jesus mighty name we pray for them. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Would you put your hands together for them? Are you going with them? You'll go with them? Okay. So, can you go with them after we are done? Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Because I want them to hear this, the last, what we are doing. Can they just sit on these prestigious seats? Go and sit here at the front. Sit there at the front. Yes. Amen. Glory to God. Yeah, sit there. Amen. Amen. Wakai tuwa pombele. Somebody has here, sweetheart. You couldn't occupy this one. Mm. <laughs> and may God remember you. And as you sit there, may you testify this year. In the name of Jesus. That prayer that you have, secret prayer, I see it. May God reward you in the open, in the congregation of the people. May God reward you. Your faithfulness together with your husband, that you will stand here and testify that he has done it. This year, not next year, this year, in Jesus' name. Amen. So as you sit there, so shall it be. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. So, the last thing we're going to do today is I want to talk about the convention. Somebody say hallelujah. Were you blessed today? Are you glad you spent Easter with us? Do you know that it's your season? Do you know that everything must resurrect? Whatever is dead, whatever you declared, so shall it be. Somebody say amen. Thank you very much, Pastor Joan. You're the best with Pastor Karu. Pastor Karu, who asked you to go and sit? <laughs> you can, Pastor Karu. <laughs> uh, yeah. Amen. So the next Donors of Zion is on the 27th of April, okay? Uh -huh, at 
2 p.m. Please make sure that you come. It's going to be powerful as usual. We thank God that he's going to take us to levels untold. Now, on the, uh, uh, the, the convention begins on the 26th of August to the 1st of September. <laughs> on the 26th of August to the 1st of September. We have Dr. Cindy Trim coming. We have Prophetess Leslie Osei coming. I know you all love us so much. Amen. <laughs> we have Dr. Medina Pullings coming. <laughs> Somebody say amen. We have Sun Misola coming. Together with her husband, amen. There is another one we are talking to. We'll let you know. They haven't confirmed yet. We'll talk to you when they do. We have uh, Pastor Mary Amri coming. That one is a serious financier. That one has hotels everywhere in TZ. Her, she's a mover and a shaker. Whenever we go, we stay in her hotels. Dangerous high class. We went with you people. We had a beautiful time. So she's, she's, she's going to show us, teach us on business and how to do it. Somebody say amen. And so she, she's, she's going to be coming. And then I have a, a friend of mine. Oh my gosh. I'll tell you about her very soon. She's also going to be coming. We thank God. It's going to be the most amazing convention. And guess who is going to start it off? Our bishop. If you're still sitting, I don't think you have heard me. If you're still sitting, I don't think you have heard me. I said our bishop is the one who is going to be opening the convention this year. My God. What a mighty God we serve. Hey. Hey. We serve a mighty God. Sit down now. We thank God. We thank God. So, here's what we're going to do. Even this year, the, the convention is going to be run by the partners. And the partners did such an amazing work last year. Oh, you guys. They really, really were a great blessing. They came through in such a tremendous way that we were able to do for our guests things that we had not even done before. We were able to really host them well, really take care of them, really bless them well. And they were totally blessed by all of you guys. You are amazing. And so my duty right now is to raise up partners. So we are starting that today. And I want to raise up partners. And Nonsisi is so good to see you. <laughs> Nonsisi is the, the wonderful lady from Kameme that I do the program with on Wednesdays, the last Wednesday of the month. Look at her, she's so beautiful. Nonsisi, please stand and wave, wave at them. She has serious kikuyu and she, she teaches me a lot. <laughs> yeah, karibu sana. Amen. So, I want today to raise partners. If you're here and you're saying, Mom, I want, you see, many of you wonder how, how to preach the gospel. How to, this is how you preach. You, you, that's why I was saying that your work matters to God because it's about kingdom. So if you partner with God in this, you're partnering with the kingdom of heaven. Do you understand? When souls get uh, uh, saved, when people get transformed, when lives get lifted, your life also gets lifted because you're part of it. So God has used you as a financier to make sure that it happens. And so our conventions, if you've looked over the years, have been going up. They've just been going this way. They've been amazing. I don't think we've had one like we did last year. Last year was beyond. It was just something else. This year, 2024, the year of fruitfulness. Hear me, this convention, will be one to be spoken about for the rest of the year. It will be dangerously powerful. It will be so powerful. And I believe with all of my heart that we'll all get involved to make sure that we see God do great and mighty things. How many of you have been transformed by the conventions? Amen. All of you. All of you. And so I thank God for that. So today, many people come, by the way, who were paid for before. And now they're the ones partnering with me for the convention. They couldn't afford it themselves. Now, they are the ones who partner. 
they come and they just partner with me. So if you're here and you're saying, Mom, I want to partner with you. I want you to stand up on your feet. You're here, you're saying, yes, Mom, I want to partner with you. I want you to stand up on your feet. Amen. I'm going to raise this year as many partners as I can. Amen. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I want you to come forward, please. Because we like it when, we, when you partner, you tell us what you're going to partner with. Many have been partnering. There are people who partnered with us even for a million, for 1.5, for 500, for 200, for 100,000, 50,000. There are many women that partnered with us in so many different ways. And I really acknowledge you. I really do. From the depth of my heart. May God bless you. As those women, amen. As those women uh, come on air and, 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 and they come and live in hotels and they are blessed they are replenished. May your life also be replenished. Amen. Thank you. You all partner with me so over the years. You've partnered with me. You've stood with me because you have believed in the vision. And you have seen that it's working. And so I thank God because you have, uh, you can testify that uh, your partnership has never gone in vain. That God has blessed you as well because of partnering. Amen. So please just write down what it is that you will partner with so that we can pray for you. Now, whenever you write what you're partnering with, what we do, we get into prayer together with my team. And we ask God to put it in your hands. And many of you testify that the minute you partnered, something happened. Your business grew. Some of you opened. Somebody came to me and said, Mom, I have three businesses. I now have three streams. All of them are working. And I said, wow. Now, wow. And so there is no way you will partner with God and nothing happens over your life. You must testify. This runner is going all over the world. Oh my, when did you come back? Eh, this week. <laughs> this one. She's going to know where? Australia. She was in Australia the, the, a, few, a month before you were in London. And then, then the US. She's all over the world, this one. She's going all over the world. And she partners dangerously. You know? And so we thank God because God is doing great and mighty things. Amen? Yeah, Musao here partnered and God has really been doing great things over her life and her business. And many of you, if I start giving testimonies over every one of you, we'll never finish. But many of you have testified of what the Lord has been doing over your, your, your life and businesses. Thank you. Thank you so much for partnering with me. I love you so much. Some people don't even come to JCC, like my friend there, you know, uh, but, but they still are amazing. And my baby niece. I love you. Amen. So thank you so much, guys, for partnering. Write it down and let's see. Many of you, I believe God will bless you to partner as well. I believe it. God will bless you to partner. Amen. So I'm going to keep on raising partners until we get to maximum and say now we are good. Amen. So if you're partnering with me and you're ready to do it now, please go ahead and do it. If you're ready to come and keep doing it over the weeks, please just come and amen. So the sooner we do it, the better. We are so happy that at least <laughs> the dollar has gone down. So that last year, last year the tickets were double. We were paying air tickets like what? Like one, two for one, you know? So we thank God that this year at least to na brief kidogo, senor. So we thank God, yeah. Go ahead and partner with me. Thank, may God bless you. May he do you well. May he increase you in every way. And if you're there online, uh, Christine, uh, uh, Judy, uh, Pastor Judy from, from uh, South Africa, all of you, uh, Angie from the U.S., all of you that are there watching right now, and you say, hey, yes, uh, Jesse Atlanta, all of you guys, partner, partner with me so that we can make sure that this convention goes to heights untold. Please partner with us. For everybody else, make sure that you register as well. Register. Because that also helps us to wait on you very well. We know how much food to cook over, over lunch hours. We know, you know, what to do. So please go ahead and also register. So you may not need to, to pay if you're not partnering. But you need to register. So the registration contact is that one. You go ahead and just write it down so that you can register online. You don't have to queue. We came out of those things. See, see, we are advancing. We came out of queuing. You just uh, uh, register 
you go, you 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 write you whatever you on, on that number and god is good and if you're watching us online and you can't see it it's 0718 triple you can register for daughters of zion convention on that i believe this year we'll have an, a serious overflow i believe we'll have a serious overflow so please go ahead and, and write what you're writing. Amen? Amen. I'm going to pray for the partners. And then as I pray, after I pray for them, we're going to just stand. So they'll continue writing. Amen? So that we can all close. Please um, stand up on your feet. Let's pray for them together. Our Father and our God, I want to thank you for every partner, oh God, that's partnering with DOC. I pray, Father God, that you bless them abundantly beyond measure. Master, even as they have stood with the work of God, I pray that you will stand with them, O oh God, privately. And in their businesses, in their workplaces, you will give them favor that is unmerited. I pray for them, Father God, that they will see you and know that it's your hand at work. So bless them abundantly, I pray, O oh God. Open doors for them that no devil can shut. Let them testify that indeed you have partnered with them as well. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. Everybody else stand up on your feet, lift up your voice and say, Surely, Surely. goodness and mercy, signs, miracles and wonders shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. This year, I am arising. I am becoming everything that God said I will. This year, I will not be delayed, neither will I be denied. I'm getting a hold of what God has for me. This year, I am testifying, and laughter will be my portion. I will laugh at everything that put me down, everything that shamed me. I will laugh at it on its face in the name of Jesus. Because fruitfulness is my portion. Amen. And amen and amen. And I stand to say, so shall it be. Or it cannot be otherwise. Nothing shall cover you. Every cover we have removed it. In the name of Jesus, whoever needs to see you will see you. Whoever needs to do business with you will do it. Whoever needs to promote you will promote you. Whoever needs to marry you will marry you. It is your season in Jesus' name. I love you, love you, love you. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll see you here tomorrow. God bless you. Remember tomorrow. Hey, Mukuje.